I've stumbled into a world called Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate where everything is both familiar and very foreign, and everything is just really ugly and low poly. Hey, hunts. Welcome back, Classy Crew, on another adventure as we head out to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and I seek to hunt every Monster 51 to be exact on this journey, and I will journal my adventure through a game I probably should have played almost 10 years ago. But here we are, 10 years late to the game, dabbling in what is another old game. And man, this game is old, and there's a lot of stuff, and I, I feel like a noob again. Like all the lessons I learned, all those hundreds of hours in Rise and World, they just don't seem to matter anymore because it's like I've, I I entered a world, I'm like, what's this? I don't know what's this, what, what's going on here? Why does no one wear pants in this village? What is going on? And music. what is this new weapon in my hands? Why am I not holding on to a switch axe? Oh, that's right, because it what sucks in this, this game. There are so many things to talk about and there was so much stuff to absorb. It reminded me of my first days in Monster Hunter World, which is both great and exciting, but it's like, oh my god, I've done all this, all this, all these hunts, and now I'm, I'm like starting over again, and it's just, it's not as like new to discover because everything kind of works the same, but everything's different at the same time. So we're gonna walk through everything, and I'll share my thoughts on my first four hours in Monster Hunter 3 U, which spoilers, I only hunted one monster. This, there was so much stuff to grab. I only hunted one monster and that was a great Jaggy. And fair, it was a new monster. So, I mean, there's gonna be that to talk about, but the rest of it, we're gonna talk about just initial uh, uh, impressions of the game. So the first thing that greets you to this, besides the beautiful cutscene and the beautiful soundtrack is the character creation screen, which I complained in world that that one was a little bit like too complex and there were too many details. This one, I was like, why is everything so ugly? Like it was my first reminder that this is a 10 plus year old game that first came out on 3DS, then got the HD remix and ultimate thing added to uh, the Wii U version. But my goodness, it was gaming ugly back then. And it's not that long ago. It's just ugly. So anyways, I made my character and going from my world hunter to my 3U hunter, I'm just like, what have they done to you? <laughs> They've just like removed all definition from your face. And it was really hard to find uh, a man, like a man model that wasn't just like giving me Chad vibes. Like all the, all the hunter models were like all like very testosterone fill and very angry, like a lot of angry eyebrows. I'm just like, just give me a happy, innocent man frolicking around who wants to just kill everything in sight. Um, so I ended up with this, whatever's on screen, and that's gonna be our hunter for this journey. Very sad to uh, not have a Palico creation screen. I'm like, oh, do we not got a Palico in this game? Do I not have a classy or a classy junior or a classy senior or uh, an, a great, great grandpa classy on my adventure? That's a little sad but I guess he can finally stop stealing my spotlight. So there's that. All right, so we go into Moga Village and seriously, nobody wears pants in this game. Like at least my initial impression of this village, I'm like all the kids, no pants. The Everyone else, I'm like, oh, they got pants. Then they turn around and it's just like crotch and butt exposed. Pants. And like they added some detail there that they didn't need to add. So no pant village. I'm the only guy with pants, which is like, hey, this guy has this has the sensibility of wearing pants. Maybe he should be the hunter. And that's the story here. The next thing I noticed right away was the movement. I went to like talk to NPCs and I hit the control stick and nothing happened on screen. And then I breathed and then my hunter moved a little bit and then I stopped and then he kept running and then he stopped. I was like, what is this lag between my input and my character? And it's not so much lag as it is a momentum, like a ramp up. So you like, you don't get like an instant movement. You move in the direction and then he's like, all right, I guess I'll move that way. And then he speeds up. At first I was like, oh, this is going to destroy my experience. I can't play a game like this. This is going to be horrendous. And within 30 minutes, I already forgot about it. It kind I just, it just, I gr it grew onto me and I knew how to like account for it. But compared to all other games, Dark Souls, everything else I'm playing, there's a massive momentum lag, but I think as a player, you get used to it really quick. Um, it, it didn't become an issue in any of the hunts. So that's not a issue anymore. The aesthetics of the game, 
Uh, I mean, it's an old game. Everything just looks very bland. Like when you come out of the village and they're like, you got this like amazing symphonic music and it's like, look at this landscape. And I'm just like, oh, look at this big brown square <laughs> next to this big polygons. blue square and a little bit of green. It's just so ugly. Uh, the weapons is the next thing we I dabbled with. So I didn't try all the weapons because everything was... So I, I went with the switch axe. And the first thing I learned, I realized is you cannot roll and morph, which was a big like no for me because the, the whole thing that I love about the switch axe is its fluidity in switching. And as I learned how to move in world and rise with the roll and the switch and all that, like it just perfected everything here. You don't get any of that. You're literally like chop, chop, switch, chop, chop. Like it's just so slow and rigid. So I tried that. And I was like, no. After that, I went for the great sword because I'm like, maybe this is the old game that I play like the classic weapon. And I tried it and it's like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, it's just so slow. I don't think I can deal with this slowness. Like as much as I really, I'm like, the game is going to be clunkier and slower than the new stuff. I might as well use a clunky weapon like the great sword, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Um, so after that, I went to the next weapon with sharpness, which was the long sword. And honestly, what sold me on the long sword, so I, I decided to go forward with the long sword, is the XA attack, which lets you jump back and whoosh. And I'm like, that maneuverability, I'm down for. So I'm, I'm loving what the long sword has to offer there. Uh, with the hunts, I, I like the, the vertical slice. I don't like that there's like a base horizontal slice. So A just gives you a poke. And I was like, oh. So it's like, it's very like, you have to be very much aligned with your monster to hit it, or you can't unless you start using R, which you need to charge your gauge. And then with R, you get the whoosh, whoosh. And that's, I'm all about the whoosh, whoosh. So I like that. And I learned in the great Jaggy fight that if you can whoosh, whoosh in a combo, your sword powers up, and then I think you do more damage. And that felt great when that all clicked. I'm like, oh, whoosh, whoosh, five combo, light, like sword on fire, let's go. Um, so I've always been curious about long swords since I saw pro players use it in world. I was like, I want to do some of that. Uh, so to try a new weapon in 3U, I'm really excited to just see how, how this is going to go. So for now we're long sword and maybe I'm going to dabble with more weapons, but uh, I have a lot to learn with this world and with this new weapon. So it's going to be probably long sword for a bit. Um, the next thing are the menus that really stood out to me in the sense that compared to world and even rise, I feel the menus are a little bit simpler at this stage. Like I was navigating the menus. I was like, this is pretty manageable and comfortable. Uh, it's not like world, which is assaulting you with an army of menus with so much like levels in the menus. This one starts off nice and it's, it's processable. I don't know if it's because, you know, I have a little bit more experience with monster hunter that some of the stuff is a little bit more intuitive, but the menus are smaller and there's just less menu. So I think it's a little bit more easy to go through. Uh, after that in the field, the other thing that was kind of cool is the charm of this game. I love the dialogue of the characters, everything. Like there's so many times I'm like, I can't believe they just said that. Did they just say that? Like everyone is just teeming with so much personality. Just the game is so full of charm. And I went out to like cook my meat. Cause I'm like, all right, let's try the barbecue thing. And there's this like amazing little music. So like dun 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 and then you like, bam, I got my first well done steak on the first try. And then out of nowhere, there's like a woman's voice that's like, oh, tasty. I'm just like, what? What is this? This makes no sense, but I don't care because it's it's great. It's just, it's so like iconic. So now I'm like, I want to cook more meat because I want to hear that again. Um, it, it's like a nice reward. And it's just like the right amount of cheese. Like, oh, like me as a person in this, like this franchise, identifying the cheese level. Uh, the next big thing was underwater combat. Will I like it? I was surprised that it was not as bad as I thought it would be. Now, to be fair, I have not had an intense fight underwater, but I've gone underwater. I've swam around. I killed a few bananas and it was manageable. It was manageable like any fight. You know, you position your camera, you move, nothing too hard there. And then you just align your weapons. That's okay. The dodging, we'll see when we get into more intense fights. But for maneuverability, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. So for underwater, I'm cautiously saying it's okay. Uh, the next big lesson I had to learn was the freaking item box. 
Uh, so I filled up my items very fast and I learned very quickly that when you come back from hunts, you want to send everything to box and not keep in your pouch. So item management is a lot more important in this game. And if anything, it makes me appreciate every item because you have to look at it before you put it away. So in world, I have so many items. I don't know what it is because I'm just like, what is all this? Put it in the box. What is all this? Put it in the box. Uh, whereas now you're like, oh, what is this? Put it in the box. What is this? Put it in the box. So it makes it makes everything more intentional, especially item management. And not just that. That's like a theme I think of this game is everything is more intentional. Like even moving to an NPC, it's like, do you really want to move there? Because there's that momentum. Are you committing to this action? And then even like all of your like thrust and, and weapon moves are a lot more intentional of like, are you really going to commit to that attack? And I'm getting ahead of myself, but even the great Jaggy fight, uh, the monster projects more. I mean, this is a intro monster, but I'm like, oh, he's got like three attacks. Okay, he's going to do this. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. And it's not so much about being reactive or mashing buttons or like just roll, roll, roll. So we'll talk more about combat in a moment quests it took forever to get to quests and i was like is this a quest no that's a request T turns out i was in tutorial for like three hours before i got out of it and then when the the quests opened up i'm like Phew. i'm like this is exactly like rise this is like monster hunter rise you got the star levels and then when you find the hidden quest it unlocks the urgent mission and there's so many things i was like oh that's that's why rise is like this oh that's why rise is like the like rise is the evolution of this formula, which I know a lot of you have tried to explain that to me, but now I understand it. I was like, oh, Rise is a continuation of the old world. And I realized I've been saying we're going to the old world when I had already gone to the old world of Rise. Um, when I say old world, I am I was referring to old games. So yeah, I can see how Rise is more of a natural evolution of Monster Hunter than World was, uh, because so many similarities from the village, you know, you're in a little village, you're the soul hunter, you have the quest items, um, just the nature of how things feel and the story progresses, just, I'm seeing a lot of similarities. Um, the next thing to comment on is the Lagia Cruz, which was not expecting to encounter that so early in the game, but well done. It really reminded me of when I first met Anjanath and Rathalos in World. And this is something Rise did not do well of like introducing you to a really big creepy monster right off the bat. Like I think this was my second or third mission and they're like, yeah, go go get some guts. And I jump in the water and then they're like, grab flagship monster. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, already? Do I have to fight this thing? I don't even know how to fight. And they're like, nope, just swim away and get guts. So that like made that mission a lot harder and a lot more intense, um, which is great. Like you, I want to feel that fear, bring it on. Uh, killing it's going to just feel better down the road resource points feel way more important in this game than all the other games i played um like everything i'm gathering i'm like bringing back i'm like okay here's some resource points please give me more resource points uh just i don't know if it's because it's early game but i feel like i don't have enough resource points for anything um the next thing i had to learn was the armor skills which i have not learned and in due, in due time there's a lot of stuff to process but i learned that every wet every armor gives you like a plus like gives you bonuses towards different skills and you can even get negative points towards other attributes and then if you like pass a threshold you get that skill to activate or you get like that punishment to activate and i was just like the way it's displayed i'm just like this is overwhelming i don't know what i'm doing i know that there's a lot of tools online i've heard that can help the process but man oh armor building is like whew. It's, I thought I got it in world and I'm way back to start and I'm like, okay, we're going to deal with this later. Right now I upgraded one sword. I put a bit more defense on me. Let's just kill stuff until I can't kill stuff. And then we'll worry about upgrading my armor. Uh, little secondary stuff. Very happy to find Poogie again. I almost forgot that Poogie was a staple because, you know, I played two games before and he was on only one of them. So to see Poogie again, I'm like, ah, oh, Poogie, my buddy, it's good to see you. I pet him, of course. And we got a farm and a canteen that we can actually like level up and upgrade, which I got excited for because of how it was presented. But I'm like, wait a minute. I did the same thing in World. In World, I grew a canteen and a farm. Um, I guess it's just in Rise that they didn't let you build anything, which that's a drawback. Like you could build the, the farm, which is your submarines, but like you couldn't build out a canteen. Like you just get more, the um, whatever, the balls. Um, but that's not like as cool as like actually building a building. So I think Rise missed out on that. 
I would have liked to have seen, you know, uh, a building grow as you invest resources to like expand it like a farm and stuff like that. So minus one point for rise there. And finally, the last thing to talk about is the great Jaggy. So finally, after I'm like, I just want to fight one monster. I want to see what a battle's like. And uh, it was, it was nice. Like it was manageable. I wasn't overwhelmed and getting hit all the time. Um, I could read. Not seeing the numbers was weird. Uh, I felt like I had enough stamina to do everything I wanted. Like I was good at rolling and like switching with the long sword and everything was kind of just going well. I got hit a few times, but I'm like, oh, that's okay. It's new game. My health, I think I needed potion once or twice. Nothing too crazy. Overall, very comfortable fight. And it's really cool because I met Great Jaggy in Monster Hunter Stories 2 first. And I know that there's a lot of monsters I discovered for the first time in Monster Hunter Stories 2, which is another thing. I'm understanding so many references that are more appreciated like from Monster Hunter Stories 2 I'm like oh it's a callback to this stuff like the paintballs for example are in Monster Hunter 3 U and I'm just understanding more of it like more pieces are coming together so overall 3 U is uglier than I was expecting um I'm really sad about my switch axe because it's it's really clunky but I'm excited for the new weapon Everything feels foreign. Everything feels new. I don't know what to expect from this journey. I don't know what a hard monster is going to be like, but I feel like a fish out of water. And I, I think it's going to be a challenging journey. And I'm here for it. Nothing was really frustrating yet. And I'm just all here for the curiosity and like discovering and discovering. And then there's going to be multiplayer to discover. And it's just like, oh my God, I like I'm getting flashbacks of my original journal series of world because everything is just about like what's over there what's over there so i just can't wait for the next stream so i can discover more and like buff my guy more and just like get the skills and get that confidence and discover the new monsters and understand more of this game's world um it, it's it's exciting me more than rise for some reason but maybe we'll talk about that in a different video otherwise i gotta go back to hunting so i'll see you on the next stream and until next time hunters keep it classy Friends, we've only been in the old water world for only two streams, but I have found some darkness, and I'm not talking about full pockets, but a duck. A duck named Kuropeko. Man, what a frustrating duck. Let's go hunt a duck for you. Attention all life and gamers. A Kuropeko gamer girl in your area needs your help. Only you can save her from this summer. Give me back my game of God! Hey, hunts. Welcome back, hunters, to another Monster Hunter Journal. This time, while I'm chronicling my journey of hunting all 51 monsters in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, we are now down to 48. If you like that kind of stuff, I've already journeyed World, Rise, and Stories 2. In, in the Monster Hunter stuff, and now we're here on this journal. I think I, oh, I did Iceborne too, but that's part of World. Today, I've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. So first of all, I started this past stream really tired, so I made a lot of mistakes, like forgetting to empty my pockets, and I have been punished, and I, have, I am learning so fast that, Hunter, you must empty your pockets before you go on the ride, which is the hunt, because if you don't, you're not gonna get far. And my first quest was like a, I think it was a fetch quest. And I get, I get into the um, the quest and I walk, I'm like, wait a minute, are my pockets full? I check my pockets. I was like, ah. Oh. So first lesson, which is being reinforced really heavily in this game, off we go. Next, I want to talk, okay. So the big thing I want to talk about in this video is how, how base three U reminds me of my black dragon fights in world but that's the juicy bit so before we get to the juicy bit let me share with you the the folly of chat so i have a love hate relationship with my chat on twitch as you may or may not know and so i'm all about completing all the quests and i was looking i think it was a one star quest and it was about fishing and everyone's like no don't go fishing. It's going to take you 50 minutes. It's going to be so boring to watch. And I was like, well, I want to go fishing and I'm playing this game the way I want to. So yes, the chat has gotten more vocal in what they would like to see from me. But you know what? I've gotten more stubborn and comfortable in what I want to play now that I know a little bit more about this world. So I'm like, chat, we're going fishing. You're either coming along and watching or you're going to go to another streamer. And so we went fishing. And the reason I want to go, and I have to say, my choice in fish in going to fish was reinforced. This was my first fishing quest, and I figured 
this game will teach me things I might need to know. And that's why I wanted to do it as well as completing everything. And of course, I get into the quest and it's like, oh, before you go fishing, you have to catch some, uh, some goldfish. Uh, I think that's what they're called. So they're like, there's some bait in here, go into this area, they're fishing. I'm like, okay, the game is teaching me how to fish. It's teaching me the basics. And we go out and Chad's still whining off to the side being like, it's gonna take forever. And so we go out and I put some bait on my thing and I see the fish. I'm like, oh, there's a golden fish in the water. Is that what I wanna catch? And of course, after a few pulls, yes, that is what I want to catch. So one of three goldfish done. And now everyone's like, now you're out of bait. Now it's going to take forever. And I'm like, it's okay. I got some worms and I put some worms. Anyways, fast forward seven minutes and this quest was over. So I don't know what chat was talking about, but I got my three goldfish within seven minutes. I even told them to start a timer. We got our fish. And then I'm like going back all like, hey, 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 I know what's up. And then I don't know if like chat paid off some me linkses, but I got ganged up by a Lynx who took my goldfish no! and I panicked no! so hard because I thought I'd have to go fish again and then chat would have been laughing at me. Um, so I got mugged and then uh, anyways, I smacked that cat, took my goldfish and I'm like, okay, no more gloating. Let's just get out of here and finish this quest. Um, so that was one of the highlights of the last stream. Um, then I, I got to learn how to capture. And again, this is the game teaching you it's teaching you like hey you can hunt but now it's time to capture and remember you gotta use the capture tool and this is how you do it and i like how the game is teaching me and it's probably because i have experience in the franchise that i'm learning more i still think it could be overwhelming for a new player but for someone like me i'm like this is perfect i'm learning exactly what i need to learn from this game and so we captured our first arsros which was really fun to fight and this is the common theme i want to talk about what does common baby monsters in monster hunter 3 you have in common with black dragons from world and rise so let me no just world so let me share that um i loved the fights i loved the most in iceborne were my final opponents fatalis uh Valkana, and alatreon and what i loved about it is because that that those fights required a certain dance it required you to dodge specifically and it required you to fight in certain openings and learn how your character moves and your weapon moves to exploit those and i know i'm simplifying it because you could say well you get to do that on all the monsters that's the whole formula of monster hunter yes but in world and rise all of those other monsters are a lot more forgivable that a lot of the times you can kind of go in swinging and you'll as long as you don't get hit too much or you got enough potions, you're going to come out of it winning. With the Black Dragons, it's different. You actually need that skill. Otherwise, you're just not going to get through that no matter how many potions you got. And if you get hit like twice, you're dead. So I feel that in Old World, at least the three monsters I've fought so far, and I understand it's very early, it's that same mechanic because I can't just spam my weapon. All the weapons lock into an animation a lot more like severely but that goes for the monster too and so when the monster is doing this like you don't want to be smashing your buttons because if you do that you're going to miss your opponent like you're going to miss your opportunity to exploit the weakness and so you really want to wait as soon as like one monster let's say the arsros does this that's when you're like okay i need to push this button and this button i'm going to land here and i'm going to boop boop and i know like to the veterans this is probably common sense and I know to even anyone who's played any Monster Hunter game, that is common sense. But it is so crystal clear in 3U that like the heart of the series, the formula, like this is what you need to do. From the beginning monsters, it's just so clear that it like I I I love it because I got to experience that like clear as day in the final fights of world. But like when you start world as a casual um you can do a lot of mistakes on the great jagras and as long as you're hacking away at it for the most part and rolling you're probably going to be fine assuming you got a rolling weapon and that's good because that's really good for like uh, an introductory player to kind of get to familiar with the world so i think world was fantastic to get new players like myself into the franchise but the old games like 3u i think delivers more on what makes monster hunter really special and i do think and I know, like, there's a lot of people that love to hate on Rise for the sake of hating on it. I'm not hating on Rise for the, just for the sake of it. But I do think Rise, especially because it's going back to the roots of the old world, it, it's so fast and it did borrow a little bit more of that friendliness of world, but it lost that ability. Like, when I went to Rise and everything felt a little bit easier, I thought it was because I was a trained hunter from world, but I realized 
no, 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 it is different, especially now that I'm in 3U. I'm like, everything is a lot more intentional. And Rise, not everything is more intentional. It's it's just faster and uh, it's a little bit more action-y. And maybe that has more mainstream appeal, which is fantastic for Capcom and its sales and its investors. Um, but from a player, I can definitely now appreciate both formulas of the speediness of Rise, but also the, um, the mechanical, intentional fights of the old world. And I love that. So I think my playthrough of 3U is going to be a lot better than I originally anticipated. Now I'm only three bosses in, or three monsters in, so I could be completely wrong. One thing I do not like about 3U right now is, oh my God, do the monsters not drop a lot of parts. So I've killed the Great Jaggy maybe three or four times. I've made two or three pieces of armor compared to World or Rise, where I could kill them maybe once or twice and build like most of my armor set with it. Uh, we're, uh, 3U is requires a lot more grindiness and they want you to sink a lot more time. They're like, you want that armor set? You better work for it. You want that beak from the Kuru Peko? You better focus on smacking that beak from the Kuru Peko. So, uh, yeah, that part, I'm like, oh boy, I'm going to need to put a lot of time aside just to grind out the armor sets. Um, another thing I learned uh, uh, just through my fights and through chat telling me is that the longsword has this combo. So now I can like slash down, slash this side, and then twice X, which goes like, choot, choot, and then you can go back into your poke and then down slash. So that was very helpful. Now let's talk about my first new monster. Well, no, Great Jackie was a new monster. First proper new monster. Let's call it the Crew Peko. So I had encountered this monster in Monster Hunter Stories 2, and it was a little bit of an annoying monster because it calls for help. I never realized how much more annoying that is in the traditional hunting games because now you literally have to deal with another monster. So this great Jaggy kept coming in because the crew Pekka was like, Attention, all Roblox gamers. And like I, I, throw, I threw poo at the, at the great Jaggy and he just kept coming back and I ran out of poo. Like I had a poo problem. And so after a while, I was so frustrated. This is the only monster that heals too, as far as I know. So he kept healing himself and then the great Jaggy. And I was like, all right, all right, we're going to get serious here. This, this party, I am clearly not part of it. And I am being laughed off because you got the crew Peko healing, uh, calling the great Jaggy. And then you got the great Jaggy calling all the little Jaggies. And then the crew Peko is like, I'm over here stroking my, and it's like, we're going to stop this nonsense right now. So uh, I went after the Great Jaggy on my own. Like I isolated. I'm like, Great Jaggy, you're going to die. I need your armor pieces anyway. Kill the Great Jaggy. I just like removed all the backup for the Kuru Peko. And then I'm like, all right, little duck, get over here. And we just smacked that duck into tomorrow. And Kuru Peko fell. But man, that was a 35 minute fight. And I was not expecting that. From my third fight, I was like, stupid duck. It also, I guess, doesn't help that I didn't have um, a really sharp weapon yet. And it's just... I don't have options. And so my sword kept going bonk, bonk, bonk. And I'm just like, oh my God, this sword, just please slice this duck so we can have some delicious duck for dinner. So um, that was a hard fight, but we unlocked my first uh, ecology video, I think, or um, I don't know what it's called, but we basically got to see the Kuru Peko in its natural element. And I thought it was super cute. And I guess there's more videos like this throughout the game where they just show you the monster in its natural element. I love that. That's fantastic. I, I can't wait to see what all the other stuff is. Uh, and then finally, the last thing to talk about is I got our companion Cha-Cha, uh, who is fantastic. I love reading everything about him. He's no classy though, and he's nowhere near better than a Palico. So for all of those who, who are saying the onion thing or the acorn face is better than a Palico, get out of here. Classy is way better than Cha-Cha. But I love how Cha-Cha talks. I love, I love the energy he brings to the table. I love that I'm not alone anymore. And you know what? Cha-Cha was keeping a lot of aggro from the Kuru Peko. So Cha-Cha won a lot of points in that fight. Otherwise, I would have probably died to the Kuru Peko because I had also forgotten how to eat or I had forgotten to eat. I had not brought enough whetstones, which is a new problem that I never had before. So yeah, we had, we had a lot of things to deal with. So with all of that insight, I am now more excited than ever to continue this game. It's starting to hook its, its claws into my heart and I can only expect to see good things to come from this game. And I'm really happy that I landed in 3U. Um, nothing's been a bit, other than the grind, nothing is really a red flag at this point. And I'm here for it. Like we got 48 monsters. Let's see what they have to offer. So I'll see you on the next stream or on the next hunt. And until next time, keep it classy. Okay, I finally understand why some people don't like underwater fights. It's not the water, it's- <laughs>
Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another Monster Hunter journal where I document my journey of hunting all 51 monsters of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. There are now 44 monsters left to hunt and we've got four more to talk about as well as a few new features I've stumbled upon in 3U. So let's get started with... There's always a fun quest I do before I got to warm, like to warm up before I get into the hunts. And this week it was the egg quest. Now the egg quest was had such a reputation in the world. I, I had no idea what it was. I had no idea for the context of what an egg quest was. But the chat was always like egg quest, egg quest, like kind of like chanting on the side of how crazy this egg quest would be. And in the world it was quite fun. I was like I ran, I found an egg, and then I hustled back while a bunch of Aptonoth chased me down. And I looked at my stamina gauge very scarily as it went almost down to zero. So I figured in 3U it would be a similar concept. You find the egg, you steal the egg, you hustle back to camp while everyone's chasing you. It's a little different in this one. So in a pure HJ community, in typical HJ community uh, fashion, I went out and the chat was like, no, hunt some monsters, don't do eggs, it'll take some, some time. It wasn't quite as bad as the fish quest. And so I put my hunter hat on and I was like, all right, if I was a monster, where would I lay an egg? Because everyone was like, don't tell Jay where the eggs are. Let him like feel the pain of egg hunting. So I'm like, you know what? I won't even look at chat. I'm just going to put myself like this game is pretty like good. Like logically, it makes sense. I'm like, all right. If I was a monster, where would I lay an egg? Where would I lay an egg? I wouldn't lay it in the water. I wouldn't lay it in the open plains because I'm playing on the desert level. So I'm like, I, I would probably hide it in a cave. And so I was like, all right, let's go to the region with a cave. And lo and behold, the first cave I find, there's a tree in there somehow. And the eggs are not visible which is a problem but i walked to the tree a prom came up and i was like oh what's this boom egg so i'm i'm glad the logic actually works no bullshit for monster hunter 3 you then i hustled back i'm like oh great now i'm gonna get chased by a bunch of things nothing chased me so i was like oh that's refreshing but i had to go through the valley of the uh, of the mealinxes which it's always dangerous when you're trying to go through like the mealinx Me alley they're just trying to mug you so that was the biggest danger of the egg quest but made it back hustled back got another egg and we finished the egg quest it was a good time now another item uh someone left a comment on the last journal talking about a few critical items i should have to make my life easier i don't remember the list but i remember one of those items was the book of combos and i'm learning a lot about books in this game and so i, I grabbed the book and I, I learned that this book helps you improve your chance of crafting which is a whole like other chapter from world and rise of, of things i didn't even know for example when you when you mix things, you have a chance of failing and then you end up with garbage. And this was something I hadn't quite like, quite clicked until I got the book of combos where I realized, oh, you hold on to the book of combos and your chance of crafting goes up. I'm like, that's a pretty cool mechanic. I was trying to understand like, do I hold on to the book? Do I put it in the box? And I was like, grab your book, put it in the box, craft in the box, do everything in the box. And that'll increase your, your chances. I'm like, oh, I get it now. So crafting makes more sense. I also went out on a few hunts without potions uh, because I don't know what I did. I think I like got crazy and made all my potions into mega potions, but then I didn't put them in my item box. I'm still struggling with the item box. Uh, so finally, I'm getting into the habit. So I was getting into the habit of just dumping everything in the box, which is still not like secondhand nature. But now it's also, oh, don't forget to replenish the good items like your pickaxes and your potions. So I did a lot more uh, crafting and gathering this time around. But enough about the boring stuff. Let's talk about my first hunt, which was the Royal Ludroth. And what a different fight this was. So the first time I encountered Royal Ludroth was in Rise. And this was in, you know, a watery level that had no water except for like Split Splash. And there was this banana who's like, I'm an iguana. Uh, it looked like a worse version of Great Jagras. And the first time I found him in Rise, I pummeled him, I killed him, and we moved on. And he was the, like extremely not memorable. So this time to see him again, I was like, all right, hello, Royal Ludroth, we meet again. I will slice this banana into many slices. And so the fight began. And already at the beginning, it was a lot more intense. I was like, oh my God, this thing attacks, it rolls. I'm a lot slower. I can't just like wire bug around him and like flash, flash, flash. So yeah, the, just the, the land combat was more intense. And he was like spitting bubbles at me. I was like, all right. I gotta I got be more on my toes, gotta be more defensive. And I was dodging, I was learning the mechanics. And then he had his buddies like gang up on me. I'm like, no, no, this is a one-on-one -on -one fight. So I killed his buddies. And then we went back to the one-on-one -on -one dance. And it just felt more like, more iconic. I was like, okay, this guy's a serious monster. And I think he's an urgent quest. And then like, 
We just dialed up the difficulty, he jumped in the water. And this is where Royal Ludroth gets his reputation, because I think this is my first underwater fight, so I jump in the water. And you can see its face, and this thing, you know, on land, it's like, sure, it's pretty slow. But then it goes in the water, and it's all like, grease lightning in the water, and so... You, like you're so slow it's it, you can actually see its face and its eyes more and it looks menacing and it's moving much faster but not so fast that you can't dodge it so like overall i think this was a 30 35 minute hunt and uh i think i also messed up this was the hunt i didn't have the potions so i had to i, I got rid of all my first aid kit and then i had to like keep running back to camp to heal because there's no way to make more potions or find more potions so that was a, that was a struggle a new a newbie struggle but the fight itself was a lot more intense so this was a much better impression of royal ludroth because honestly seeing him in rise zero impression and then i saw him again in stories and i was like i don't care about royal ludroth he's in rise like you know from my experience in rise i just don't care about him but now that i experienced him underwater where he actually moves fast and he's actually threatening and the things he taught me bring your potions um i'm like oh i respect royal ludroth so much more now so he died. Uh, and then we went off to the next fight. Uh, no, before I went to the next fight, I upgraded my sword. So my long sword had this like yellow sharpness, which has been a problem in all my fights so far. So as part of my gathering quest, I finally got some items to build a new katana, which looks way more slicey dicey. It looks a lot cooler and it's got green sharpness more importantly. So I went after the Great Ragi, which is another one I met in Rise first. I was like, all right, we got to stock up on some antidotes because he's going to poison me. I went in there and destroyed the Great Ragi. So this was my fastest and best feeling fight in Monster Hunter 3U because I'm starting to, the, the combat is starting to click and my sword is starting to get beefy enough to not bounce off things and to actually do the damage. And I know the Great Ragi to a certain extent how it moves. So I went in there. I was slice slice and then we charged up da -da -da -da. I gotta come up with something better than da -da 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 -da, or slice and dice or slice or swoosh swoosh but man that combo feels so good when like you see your your soul I think it's called a soul gauge filled up and you're just like sling 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 and then you're like yeah I'm a badass samurai but I'm a hunter so uh, I think the whole quest was 10 minutes but the actual fighting the great Ragi was 5 minutes I was like whoa my god this thing died so fast and then I remembered oh yeah I'm in village quest all of this is gonna get way harder in high rank and oh my god all this is gonna get way way harder in g rank all g rank is that what's called uh in right like i the only the only reference i have for a g rank is monster hunter world iceborne and i remember how much harder that was but i didn't experience that in rise yet and so i'm just like oh man i gotta get good at this game because it's gonna get harder so great ragi dead Next up was Baroth, which was another familiar face from World. And this one, I knew that he's the choo-choo, the train of pain. So it was all about like, all right, let's see when he gets pissed and he charges. All right, he charged, swoosh, swoosh, sidestep, swoosh, swoosh, and rinse and repeat. Uh, he was really, I don't know, he was fun. I, I, I can't say anything was, I think he was more like intimidating. I remember him being bigger in World. I Like even when I go fight him in World again, like was Baroth always this small and like in Rise not in Rise in uh, stories and everything he's he's like a smaller character than I remember the first time I fought him in world he felt like as big as a like as a Diablos or something like that was the first time I had a monster ram towards me and it must have left a pretty scary impression on me because he I just remember him being so much bigger so every time I see him in a new game I was like were you always this small anyways um before we get to the final monster I hunted um there's two more things on, on the non-hunting side. So talismans, I started picking a few of those up. And oh man, I don't quite... It, it, like I understand the theory of how it works, but the practice was not working. So I understand you get one talisman slot, uh, very similar to Rise, and you get points towards your skills. And if you get above 10 points, you get a skill up. And if you get above 15 points, you know, like, I get it. But for some reason, my talisman points, I couldn't see it on my like skill list to see where it was adding things um so it wasn't like i was really confused on stream but i feel like could explain how talismans work i just wasn't seeing it work the way i expected uh so talismans are going to be something i'm going to have to 
start paying attention to as I get better ones. Right now, they're kind of meh. And I'm happy to report I have completed my first armor set. As you can see, there is a counter where I'm counting armor sets. There's like 300 in the game, but I am finally at one. Uh, but anyways, the final monster I got to fight this week was a Gobul, which is a new monster I've never uh, experienced before. His intro was like, oh my, oh my god, this thing is like a frog that lives in the water. Uh, this thing looks super scary and it, it's, it just sucks. It's like it sucks water and monsters. I'm like, oh boy, I can barely move in the water. This guy's going to like, he, I'm going to be in this thing's belly constantly. So we go to the fight and he has so, this thing is deadly, like, Yes, it sucks, uh, but it also has a paralysis attack. And there was one more thing that it did that I didn't like, that I can't recall right now. It just has like a really beefy artillery of moves and he's ugly. He's just so ugly and so many teeth. So this was really the, like the first time I dreaded something underwater. I was like going in, I'm like, how am I gonna fight this thing? So. Of course, go in. Uh, I was getting destroyed at how fast it could move, but I was just trying to like swim by, do one slice and rinse and repeat. And it was a tough fight. At no point did I really feel in control until it jumped out of the water. I was like, ah, oh, you're in my territory now. And I jumped out and I was like, swoosh, 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 swoosh. And then it jumped back in the water. I was like, ah, oh, shit. So I don't even know why that monster would ever jump out of the water because it, it had so much advantage over me in the water, it should have just stayed there. But I was happy that the programmers made it go out of the water because that gave me a sense of, of empowerment and like I had a chance to actually beat it. Uh, I can see though why it wouldn't have shown up in World Arise. We need more water levels. And I think, I think I can say this right now, I might regret these words, but a lot of people have said they wanna see underwater segments return. And I think there is room, especially in World and Rise with the faster movement, I think the underwater segments could come back as long as it is sprinkled in. I don't want a game where there is water fights constantly, but right now the balance in 3U is okay. We've only had two real fights underwater out of about, uh, I don't know how many monsters, but it, it's, the balance has been feeling good. And I would like to see in World or Rise how with a faster mechanic how underwater would work it would definitely be a little bit slower than rise and world and i think that's okay because when you're underwater you want to feel like you're not in your territory and that you're at a disadvantage and i think you could really smoothen out what that's like in world and rise and have an even more improved camera so like leave it as a small option put honestly if, if you have 50 monsters just put five monsters underwater just to have a little bit of that underwater fight uh, but the whole exploration of underwater and going into caves and things I think would work really well in a new game engine or a new like just new visuals and everything. So I would be okay to bring back underwater in a very limited amount. Don't make it 50% of the monsters underwater. That's just not fun. Nobody wants to do that. But put 10%, 15% of the monsters in the game underwater. And that would be really cool. And I would love to see like how some of these monsters would go. Um, some of these monsters would probably like move. So. My best example is the Royal Ludroth. That thing has had a whole redefinition in my mind of how threatening and how cool it was at the same time. And I'm just thinking of other monsters that could ha get that treatment that haven't had the chance to do that. Let's see what that would look like. So that's where I'm at in my hunts. Uh, next week, we are going into, I think, four star village quests and beyond. And who knows what monsters await me there. But if you want to uh, follow along, I will be live on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I'll see you there as always on Twitch. And until next time, classic crew, Keep do, do, do. Hunters, I regret to inform you that my card counter is no longer zero. And that premature far- PG Hunts. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another Monster Hunter Journal, where I go through Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, documenting my entire journey as I try to hunt all 51 monsters. And this week, I have slain a total of five monsters. I've been busy chopping up these monsters, and there's a lot of good stuff to talk about. So... Going into my first fight this time was Lagombi, the bunny. And once again, just like last week when I was talking about um, the Great Banana, because I don't remember, the Royal Ludroth, uh, once again, the Lagombi in Rise was so anticlimactic and left so little impression other than, oh cool, it's a bunny that slides. But in this one, he seemed a little bit bigger and he just felt more of a fun challenge. He felt, specifically in 3U, he felt like a... A combination of an Arzuros and a Barioth. 
I just want to make sure, are we talking about the one with the eye or is it a bear off? It might be a, might be a bear off. The train of pain, that one. Uh, because you, you get the, the bunny that launches himself at you, but then the rest of it, it's he's kind of slow and swipey like an Arzuros. So fantastic fight. I had a lot of fun playing around with this bunny because I feel that I already knew kind of how it moved. And so it was just a matter of like slash to the side, always stay on the side, move completely out of the way when he uh, slides towards you and he usually like shoots tw two to three times. And it was just a nice little dance, very comfortable, very like early monster. And I think I killed it in like 10 minutes or something. It was just a very nice, fun fight. Uh, and I just really enjoyed seeing his model felt bigger. And that's a complaint I've been saying about Rise from the very beginning, that all the monsters felt smaller in that. And I think it's because the camera, people say the camera is more um, zoomed out for the whole wire bugging thing. So I really did appreciate fighting a Lagambi that just felt a little bit chunkier. Uh, next up, we had another monster that I first met in Rise, which was the Great Baggy. At this point, I really wasn't concerned about him. Uh, I killed the Great Jaggy. I learned how to fight him. And then we got the Great Roggy, I think, which went down super fast. So I'm like, what's well, a Great Baggy? It's another Raptor, but he makes you sleep. And so I pretty much went to town on him. He was quite easy. Uh, I think one of his little sidekicks put me to sleep once where I like just started like going slow. I was like, oh no, what's going on? What's happening? And I was like, oh. So he died in like another five minutes. Uh, the raptors at this point, I feel like I've got them pretty much locked in how to kill them. Uh, and then, and then the first, <coughs> the, uh, the first cart happened. So I, I fought uh, the Lagia, Lagia Cruise, which was the repel quest. And I have to say, this was the monster that made this game feel like Monster Hunter. It was a big monster, it was intimidating, I was getting like tossed around and I was like, this is the monster hunter, like a big chunky monster that I can just pound on and that pounds back. Uh, so I, I carded and I'm gonna say it's because I did not know what his moveset was. So he had this one that like curls himself in very much and like that one I didn't know about. He like curls himself and then like tail slaps you. He really moves fast on land, like he can clear a lot of distance on land. And his neck move, or like the, yeah, I think it's his neck, he, it does like a, something like this. It really reminded me of Fatalis, but like if it was shorter, so it's like a baby Fatalis move. And he just kind of chomped away at me. But otherwise, it was, you know, step aside and just slash away at him, which felt fantastic. And outside of the one cart, uh, repelling felt good and it felt good chasing him like towards the sea just like every time you'd fight him he'd run away and then eventually jump into the sea so that was fun I was like ah, I want to keep fighting him uh, which the game is also built to make you feel that way because even the the guild uh, quest girl is all like oh you really want to kill him eh? well you're gonna get your chance and it's all like acknowledging that feeling that yes I fought him and I would I want to kill him I want to keep going um, before I get into the next three monsters on the list, uh, I want to talk about a few side things uh, that I learned. So I got Cha Cha's first mask, first optional mask, which is the fluffy mask. And I saw the text first. And I was like, oh, this is cool. A fluffy mask. I wonder how beautiful it's going to be or how cute. And he puts it on and it oh looks like God, it's it a peeled like human, human head with fake bunny ears it is stuff of nightmares with like beads poked into it it literally looks like it's a peeled potato that was left out in the sun too long how is this a fluffy mask it looks like a mask of nightmares uh i actually read what it does and it's mostly to help you uh i don't remember what it was but it, it doesn't help you in fights it helps you do something else so that's staying on the wall I'm a little bit sad that it stays on the wall so close to my bed so now as a hunter i have to sleep in a bed with that freaky mask not too far from me staring at me uh but really looking forward to seeing because i didn't even realize that was a mask rack until i got that so i'm like oh i got all these other masks to find uh so can't wait to do that i learned about my crafting list so this was a tip someone gave me last week in the comments they said when you see the white question marks craft it to fill up your crafting list book so i've been doing that and i unlocked like how to do traps and all sorts of things that was i really enjoy like completing things like that so just opening up a bunch of things in my crafting book was fun and uh i went out to port tanzia because i need a i need a might seed to build a certain sword i think or maybe it's an armor piece oh no it's the jewel i need the jewel to get another attack plus one so i have attack plus two uh and i don't have 
uh, one of those, a mite seed. So they said, go to Port Tanzia. There's an old, I met an old lady with a massive bag and she like apparently sells different things every day. Unfortunately, she didn't have a mite seed, but I got to discover the port, which I assume will become uh, the multiplayer hub, which I will be playing in. And by the way, multiplayer is coming up soon. I do expect if it's not this week, it's going to be next week. Uh, so I am getting ready to do some grinding in multiplayer and get to experience the 3U multiplayer. So that's finally happening. I will be announcing it not in a video, in a community post, in my Discord, on YouTube, the community post on YouTube, and Twitter as well. So check out, uh, look out for announcements there on how to join multiplayer. Uh, so that's all the side stuff. So back to the monsters. Uh, finally, I got to get a quest. So I had the choice between a Giginox and a Rathian, and everybody was like, go for Giginox. But I'm like, but my queen, I need to go on a date with my queen. So I went for Giginox. And everyone's like, this is better than the, be it's the better version of Kezu. I was like, well, Kezu's not that bad, but I've also learned how to fight Kezu. And the first time I met Kezu, he carded me. I think it was my first cart in Rise. And uh, I had a sharpness problem with, the, with my first encounter with Kezu. So it made it less appealing. When I went back to my switch axe, we were fine. So Giginox, I was like, all right. I was really curious to see how this could be better than Kezu. Unfortunately, I did not know Giginox poisons, and so I only had three antidotes. I came underprepared with antidotes, which potentially soured my experience because I hate Giginox. I'm just going to say it right now. That fight was terrible. I hated it, and I did not understand why people love Giginox so much. Now, I will be fair to you all that I was sorely underprepared, and so I probably got a very bad experience. And I will fight it again to see if I can appreciate it more when I go back fully prepared. Uh, so I went through all my antidotes, all my potions, and this thing, I didn't know how to move. So it was just slapping me around everywhere, laying its gross eggs. It has a mouth on, on both ends, and it just looks like, a, I'm going to say it, it's not nice, but it looks like a massive butthole with teeth coming at you. It's just disgusting. It's just like, you've seen it, you know what it looks like, it's gross. And so I want to kill it fast because I, I didn't want to look at it. Like if I could be like Kezu and not have eyes so I could kill it faster like that, like I'd be okay. But anyways, it was poisoning me. It had this stupid long neck thing and it always went to the left. So people are like, stay to the right of it. And good advice, but it also has a move that when you stick to the right of it, it jumps, flips itself so that you're back on the left. And I was like, oh, but also I was like, designers, good job. Like that is really good to make the monster be self-aware of its weak point and not let you take advantage of it. But then I was like, oh, how do I kill this thing? And then you pound it enough and it gets hard and then it gets all black and angry. And I'm just, and it, Ugh, it, it was bad it was bad and then it got worse when i learned that it could suck you too so i went inside a giginox which was not in my plans for that night he like kicked me and he was in the air like he was on the ceiling uh he or she i don't know and then it just plopped on me and just like and it was not a pleasant experience so anyways somehow i managed so i was out of potions and everything so i had to keep running back to I had to avoid being poisoned, which got easier once I learned what the moves were. But I was out of antidotes, out of potions, out of mega potions, and I had to run back to bed every time. And I was like, I'm gonna fail this quest, but then it was limping. So I'm like, oh, I just gotta bring it to the end and just finish it. I got through it. I got cart, I got one cart and just did not like it. I was getting tossed around way too much. So stupid Giginox, did not like. But Luckily, right after that, I got to have a Rathian, which was like a nice smooth massage after that disgusting Giginox. Rathian looked so much better in this game. So in even in World and in Rise, I think they redesigned her to be a little bit darker. And I always wondered why in Stories 2 she was so green. And I see that Stories 2 and the 3U design are very similar. Like I can actually see the full pattern on her wings. She's a lot more green. Uh, a lot more, it just felt like there was more contrast between her and the rest of the environment, which made her just stand out more. I was like, oh man, my queen, I'm so happy to see you again. And it was just a nut, like it's the same move set. She says the stupid chicken walk that I hate where she just runs back and forth, back and forth, and you're just getting tossed around. God, I hate that. Uh, but otherwise, it was just a nice fun fight where I'm like, oh, she's doing the backflip. Okay, move here. And I got, dis I got one cart from her because I was trying to run away. I took a potion, stupid dude flexes, and then I get shot. I think maybe it was an antidote because I got shot by her fireball. I think she was in rage. 
and I'm just here flexing in front of her and she's like, get out of here, simp. And I just, just like one shots me with a fireball. It was very poetic. Um, I don't think she liked the date because then I killed her and carved her up. Uh, but Rathian is still just as good in 3U. And if anything, she looks better. I just think this is her best design so far. Uh, and finally, we got to have our rematch with the Lagia Cruz. So the fight that I was actually kind of dreading because yes, he was really fun on the on land, but now I was going into his home territory of water and I was like, oh boy, how bad is this gonna be? It was pretty bad because I had troubles getting enough hits on him to charge up my sword and make it all glowy. Uh, so that was my biggest struggle. I was playing it safe, so I was always looking for an opening. It was just a really slow fight. When it went back on land for like one moment, Oh man, that felt great. I was like on there, I chopped off its tail. I was doing some damage. We got the, the sword to glow up, I think to like yellow. I was just bashing on it and then it goes back in the water and everything just came back down to a crawl. So again, the water segments are not fluid enough yet to make it good, especially with the long sword. I just don't know how to get enough hits without being hit. But overall, Lagia Cruz was not as bad as I thought. I did not cart on this one because I had now understood a little bit more how it moves. Um, was keeping my distance. I was actually expecting a lot more of its back. So I was expecting a super move to come out from its back when it's charging, but it was just a, I don't know if there is one and I didn't see it, but it was basically using its back things to electrify its surrounding areas. And it felt really tame of an attack. So I'm not gonna, I assume it's gonna get harder in a higher rank and beyond. Uh, but otherwise, it was just get out of its way when it comes at you. It had its little like swipey paw that kept hitting me. So every time you like underwater, he just does this. Kept keep hitting me with that. Finally, he uh, he started limping, and then he swam to his cave to go to sleep. And I was all like, "Oh yes, we're taking this home." Because I made some traps. I gone out of the way to get some um, some some uh, tranquilizer stuff, even crafted and everything. I was like, "Oh, this is in the bag. We're going there." And I was like already getting kind of like on edge because the fight still pushed me. Uh, to a level of discomfort, let's say. It wasn't like Giginox hard, but it was challenging. It was a good challenge considering the weapon and the armor I had and the skill level I have in this game. So I go to, to trap it. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, it's not an Elder Dragon. I can actually trap it. I set the trap down and I go through the menu to like cast my, my tranquilizers and boom, I'm back at camp. And I was like, what? What just happened? And when I was at Port Tanzia, the old lady was selling a Farcaster and people were like, buy it, buy it. So I bought it because chat told me to. Um, and I was like, yeah, it'll probably come in useful one day. And it was expensive. It was like 15, it was 10% of my total income. Uh, and I wasted it on a stupid miss, miss button. I don't even know what I did because I was scrolling through my items and somehow that activated. And I was like, oh no, and everybody laughed at me. And then I had to go back, Liga Cruz was now awake, so I had to fight him again. Uh, and then there was no trapping. So Liga Cruz is done, the town is saved, but hey, there's still some earthquakes. So it's like, what's actually going on? Uh, the next monsters I have to fight, there's nothing new on my list. They're like, go kill or go capture Liga Cruz again, or go fight any of the other monsters I've done so far. So I don't really know what's I have no idea what's next. Like I always knew Lagia Cruz was kind of my goal up to this point. Now I'm entering unknown territory again. I have to grind out some stuff, have to grind out some quests, uh, some armor sets, some new weapons, and hopefully I can do that in multiplayer and then I will find out what is next. Cause we're getting close to finishing or unlocking all of the, um, I think I'm going to the volcano region next. Yeah, that's the last region I have to unlock and we'll see what happens there. So it's, been a good time. Hunts are going well. I really wish I had more items to get my armor and my weapons up, but otherwise the hunts are true blast. I'm really enjoying the old world here. I'll, so I'll see you in the next journal. If I do multiplayer, I'm not sure. Well, I don't know when the next journal is going to be. It's going to be either next week or the week after that. But otherwise, uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next stream or the next video I put up on this channel. And until next time, keep it classy. Let me just start off by saying Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate was a game not meant to be played four hours a week because I am not progressing at the speed I'd like here. Pidgey Hunts. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another Hunter Journal. It's been so long since my last journal as I was away on vacation, but we're back. 
And I don't have that much to report. I fought two monsters, but I mostly failed this past week. But I'm going to talk to you about my first impression of a Durham Boros and a Nibble Snarf finally. I'm so excited I finally got to see what a Nibble Snarf was all about. The name was cute, and I have to say the monster is, it fits the name very well. But the first thing I noticed... Okay, maybe it was my first fight going into this that like kind of ruined it. I went after the capture quest of a laggy but you fight it in the flooded forest and i'm at the point where cha cha left me and i also had three weeks of rust to get off of me so the first fight was horrendous i didn't have cha cha for the first time for a hard fight i kind of forgot how to move i'm in the water the water is dirty there's a bunch of vegetation blocking my view and this laggy's coming at me kind of hard and it was really unpleasant i've been more consistent at playing Dark Souls the last couple weeks. So honestly, it was a very interesting shift in dynamic where, you know, I went from World and Rise to Dark Souls. I was like, oh, Dark Souls is so like slow and clunky. And then I went to 3U and I don't know, I knew it was going to be slow. But now that I've been playing Dark Souls 3 for a couple weeks and I go back to 3U, I'm like, oh my God, 3U is so slow, especially when you're underwater compared to Dark Souls 3. I also, I think I made this comment that one of the biggest difficulty difference, there's this big argument of what is what is harder, Dark Souls or Monster Hunter bosses. The biggest difference is not so much there. There's definitely a difficulty mechanic, but Monster Hunter specifically has the length mechanic that is not present in Dark Souls for most of the fights. So even there, there's the mechanic aspect in Monster Hunter where you have to figure out how to fight the monster, but then you have to stay on that energy level and repeat it several times because the fights, very, like unless you're a speedrunner, most monster fights will not be under five, under 10 minutes, or if you're over geared and all that. But if you're progressing naturally, organically, I would say most fights are over 10 minutes easily. And if it's your first time fighting it, it's probably gonna be over 20, 30 minutes. Versus when you're fighting a boss in Dark Souls, you're gonna be either winning or dying within two minutes. It's just much faster fights. So like going in with all of this rust, fighting a laggy with all these handicaps, it was a chore and it was my first wipe failed quest to a monster I completely lost. It was, I think I was in there for 30 minutes and I just was not doing enough damage. I completely forgot how to play this game. And it really left a sour taste in my mouth because I'm like, oh, this, this sucks. And I wanted to like upgrade my weapon. I don't have parts. And to get the parts, I would have to spend like four hours grinding off screen or on stream anywhere just to get it. Like I grinded, I did a multiplayer stream a few weeks back and I barely, I don't even think I got anything out of it. I got parts, but I didn't get enough parts to do anything useful with it. Everything just takes so long to grind out. After playing World and Rise as like, as the streaming experience of putting four to eight hours a week Playing it was nice, but with three U, man, you play four hours a week, you're not getting you're not getting very far. And I'm still just in village quests. I'm at I think the five star or the six star. I just made it to the volcano, and I'm having this much difficulty like progressing. So I'm really worried once they're gonna dial up the difficulty with um, high rank and then freaking G rank. I'm like, oh my god, it's gonna take me forever to get through this game. So I might have to bust up my stream schedule to eight hours a week just to get through three ultimate. So. I forgot, like, I'm like, I can't do laggy. This thing's too hard. I need I need better gear. I need freaking cha-cha. I just need to come back. So I went off on a hot stone quest. I went into the volcano for the first time and to go play with some hot stones because it was the only other quest I could do. There were two quests at my stage. One was capture a laggy. The other one was pick up some rocks. So I tried to give all of you a show by fighting a laggy and I failed. So I went to pick up some rocks and it was very, I actually really, I hate the flooded forest, by the way. It's my least favorite map of all times. I hate that map, but the volcano map, I love it. And I love how it's like built out where you're at the bottom of the volcano and the further you go into the map, the like higher up you go. It's fantastic. It is way better than the Rise volcano map in my opinion. This is one of my favorite maps, the 3U volcano map, love it. So I, I wander around looking for these rocks. I'm like, what's it gonna look like? Eventually I learned it looks like a mineral deposit. So I grab my ro rock, I find like little clackers, killed them. I was like, oh, what's gonna happen? And what happened? Oh, as soon as I grabbed it, my cold drink ran out. So I was taking damage from the volcano. I was taking damage from the rock. And I'm like 
wobbling with this thing and I make it two screen screens two screens over or so and I'm like this isn't gonna work I'm gonna die I'm gonna run out of health because it's kind of like a, it's a marathon you have to basically be at full health when you pick up the rock and you have to make your way down the mountain pretty quick before your health runs out like it, it's a very different mechanic than the egg mechanic a very interesting evolution of the egg quest so I do that and there's a second rock I have to get, and everyone's like, oh, ho, ho, second rock, is it going to show up? And I, like, the quest even has the big danger sign, so I know that the second hall is going to be different, that there's going to be a bigger monster in the way or something. I was entirely expecting Aknaktor to show up. I love saying that name, by the way. Chomp, 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 uh, because you've got the little baby chompers there. So I'm like, oh, how's he going to show up? So I grab the rock, I look around, nothing. So I'm like, okay, I'll go to the next screen. Where is he? Nothing. Go to the next screen, nothing. I'm like, oh... He's not going to show up. Go to the next screen. Freaking Uragon of all oh, things. No, I was not expecting face. Uragon at all in this game or at this time. But there he is. And I was like, oh, shoot. And so I'm like, wobble, wobble, wobble. Don't look back. And I should have looked back because he did something to me. Made me drop my rock. I blew up. Back to camp I go. Oh, my God. So I before, wait, before I did that? I, I sent some revenge poo in his face. I was like, if you're going to make me drop my rock, you're going to eat this poo. And so I threw that, healed up, got all my stamina back up, went back up, came back down, and he was gone. Now, I like to believe I scared him with my smelly poo, but everyone's like, no, he just patrols and he's not there. I'm like, okay, you believe what you want, but we all know it's the stinky poo that kept him away. He's like, I am not bothering this man with his rock. He smells bad. So we did that. And then the next quest was finally a new monster, the Duramboros. I've seen this in stories too, but it was my first time fighting it. And this is my kind of monster. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a big chunky mountain. Give this to me. And the elder gave me the warning that when he helicopters to stay afar until he like chomp, uh, until he drops. And then there's a big opening. And this was such a fun fight because it worked really well with my long sword. So I've been using my two or three basic attacks with the sword and I, really understood better how the long sword worked this time i learned that yeah you have your spirit gauge which i always knew that you have to charge it and then you go swoosh swoosh until you get like the magic thing but i didn't realize that when you're attacking a monster you're charging it but if you can get it all the way up into the white zone it'll hold its charge giving you more time to do swoosh swoosh so now i was a lot more concentrated of doing more damage so i can get my white bar and then when he would do his helicopter and jump, I'm like, ah, it's swoosh swoosh time. And I would swoosh swoosh. So I was doing the fight great for like 30 minutes. And then I'm like, wait a minute. He's not drooling. Like this is going on way longer than it should. And people were like saying, oh, he's like running away from the helicopter. What are you doing? I was like, that's exactly what the elder told me to do. And they're like, no, you got to run to the helicopter. I was like, excuse me, but this is a massive mountain with a big ball on its tail. And you're telling me to run into it. And so I learned uh, the chat's logic meant you have to get inside the helicopter because his feet are together. I don't think I was able to topple him, but if I do it right, you attack the feet, you topple it, and then you can hit the bump on the back, which is apparently the weak spot. So I didn't know that. And for the most part, uh, I think I broke something else on him. Um, in that last 15 minutes of the fight is when I started focusing more on the hump. And I did finally get him down but man, it took like a good 30, 40 minutes and I was oftentimes charging my sword in yellow or red mode and like I was hitting it quite often, especially compared to the laggy fight. So this is what's telling me that like, does this thing just have a lot of HP or is my sword not good? And then I look at upgrading my sword and I need like so many parts. I'm just like, well, for a streamer experience, it's either I try to fight new monsters or I spend the next three hours <laughs> getting the parts to upgrade a sword, which I don't think is that interesting. So my whole mindset of how I stream this game has to change because this game requires so much more time from you to just get the parts you need to advance. Um, I'm really, I was not expecting this. So maybe more multiplayer streams is what I need to do. And we are wrapping up Dark Souls 3 soon. So I think what I'll do is training like the Tuesday grind streams and maybe Thursday, uh, progression stream so that we can get through Monster Hunter 3U a little bit faster so that I'm not here until next Christmas still fighting high rank 3U. Um, after So Durham Burroughs fell, fantastic fight. I really had a lot of fun with this. He's one of my favorite fights from 3U so far. And then I went to Nibble Snarf, which this was a name I saw at the very beginning uh, like weeks ago and I had no idea what it was. I haven't even seen this in stories too. So it was a completely fresh new experience. I was like, I, I didn't even know it was a fish. So it's in the desert. I was like, what's this thing gonna look like? And it looks like um, the same kind of fish that I fought earlier in the game, but now it's in the sand and it's less creepy 
And I just have to say, this is another one of my favorite fights. Maybe my favorite fight of this game so far. Um, for Just for sake of fun, I think Laggy is a more like uh, challenging fight, but Nibble Snarf was just a really fun fight. And people were all telling me it was going to be annoying and stuff, but I completely disagree. Like, he doesn't move so much that I can charge up my sword quite comfortably, unlike Laggy. And with the long sword, I was having a good time with him. He had some very interesting move set. People uh, told me to put the bombs in the sand. So I got him to eat the bomb, which made him open his mouth. And I saw the belly, so I was attacking the belly. And people said, you can fish in the mouth. So I missed out on what that is because I didn't have the time to pull out my fishing rod. Um, so I'm going to check that out. But I just love what this monster is. Like he's got, um, what do you call it? gills that shoots sand backwards if you're behind him he's got this massive mouth he like swims and just a really fun fight like i really enjoyed that fight and after the the horrors of my laggy fight and just starting off so rough it, it was nice to have um i almost called him dumbledore but maybe we should call him dumbledore dumbledore and nibble snarf two great fights so the game has kind of opened up to being more good i just wish i could get my equipment better but i mean I am not playing Monster Hunter the proper way. Like, even when you look at my World and Rise playthrough, I would be the type of hunter to mostly, oh, you fight one monster, you keep going. That is not how you play Monster Hunter, and I acknowledge that. It's all about fighting, grinding, getting better, learning and refining your technique against each monster, and through that process, you get more parts to make your, your armor. And this game really, really highlights that. Um, also, preparing for your quest oh my god i'm doing so many more combination yes it's a lot more tedious but it's making me appreciate all these items this franchise has and it makes me feel a lot more like a hunter of like oh i need this i need this i don't have enough room for all this so let's get rid of this oh we need to combine this and then i gotta go to my farm but my farm has no points because i didn't take the time to farm points and i'm just really strapped for resources it's it's a pain um but it's part of the experience i know if i get the dlc i could get a bunch of free resources not doing that now. I really want to feel what this game was supposed to feel like. Um, also, the Cha-Cha thing. So Cha-Cha finally came back after, I think after Nibble Snarf, or maybe it was after Dumbledore. And uh, we met a new one, a new Shakalaka, which is Kiyamba. And now I learned that Kiyamba and Cha-Cha have this thing going on. I haven't played with Kiyamba yet. He's kind of like a little bit of a crazy, um, aggressive Shakalaka who's all like, I don't need your help. You're my servant. And I'm like, okay, first of all, you watch your tone because I'm going to replace you with Cha-Cha very soon. So I'm looking for, I think you can bring both. I haven't done a fight with both of them yet. So I'm looking to see how it helps to have two Shakalakas helping me in battle. Maybe we'll go back for the laggy capture with their help. Um, it should be a lot smoother. And also now that I've gone rid of the rust and I understand a little bit more of the dance of, you got to know when to dodge, you got to know when to heal. You can't just go willy nilly at this stuff because you're going to go through your potions like crazy, your sharpness, and then you're dead. So. This game doesn't mess around. So I'm back and I really got to polish my stuff. I got to grind out some better gear and like I, I got to get into a better flow. And when I say a better flow is I just need to commit more time to playing this game to properly play it right and not have it be like a chore and a pain to just dabble in it a little bit each week. So I'll let you know if the schedule changes. Um, I have the 12 days of HJ hey going right now, so I'm not going to add another Monster Hunter 3 Ustream. Um, but I look forward to more Dumbledore and Nibble Snarf experiences because those are my types of fight and it's good time. I'll see you on the next journal and until next time, keep it classy. I'm done. Once a switch axe main, always a switch axe main. Hey, Jay Hunts. Welcome back, classy crew. The switch axe rises once more. I, oh, I don't know why I put this down at all. What an amazing weapon. Long sword is out of here. What terrible things I will say to long sword today. So we're going to be covering two streams because I have been um, just flooding this place with 12 days of HJ videos. So we're going to be talking about the last two streams, which is covering close to the end of low rank. I thought I would be in high rank at this point, but the long sword has been holding me back. I'm just going to come out and say it. So we're going to be talking about some hunts, Volvidon, Diablos, Rathalos, Sperioth, and Agnactor. I know it's pronounced more like Agnactor or something, but I can't stop saying Agnactor, which just sounds funny to me. Lots of stuff happened in the last few weeks. Lots of old friends showed up and I have abandoned my foolish ways of trying to be a longsword user. It's just not happening. I mean, I guess that's the most controversial piece. So let's start with that. As I've been progressing in low rank, 
something has not been happening. And that is, I, as a hunter, have not been progressing very well. Usually in low rank, there's a sense of the difficulty stays with you. I always felt like I was not closing the skill gap or the difficulty gap. And I'm only in low rank and every new monster that's introduced, I'm always like, oh, this is so difficult. How is this? How am I going to survive high rank and G rank at the rate I'm going? Because right now everything feels so freaking difficult. I, I'm not going to survive high rank and G rank. And my, my biggest um, complaint, I would say, is the fact that with my long sword. So here's how I understand long sword. First, you have a long sword. Then you smack the monster a few times and you charge your gauge until it's glowing white. Then you find an opening and you swishity swoosh until your blade glows white. Then you repeat until your blade grows uh, glows yellow. Then you repeat one once more until your blade glows red. And then you go freaking ham on the monster and your DPS is <clears throat> through the roof. My problem is at step two, I think where I cannot hit the monster consistently enough, often enough to make my gauge go up. And when I finally do, I can't create an opening for a swishity swoosh. So my DPS on this thing is always locked to the lower end. And I really don't understand. I thought I would by now understand how to play better with this thing. I just can't, I cannot hit things. And I think the the straw that broke the camel's back is freaking Berioth. I would, I would go for a hit, he'd jump out of the way. I would go for a hit, he'd jump out of the way. And then he would smack me and body check me. And I'm just like, I just want to hit you. And it's always like, uh, uh, like it, the sword is so slow and you got to hit so many times and the monster is moving so much, you just cannot. So I was like, you know what? This, this is not working for me. The long sword is not working. I need to switch. And two streams ago, I was already starting to feel this. Um, I forget what I hunted. No, I don't, wait. Oh, so I the Volvidon was the first new monster I hunted. And honestly, that one was kind of fun. I preferred it once again in this one versus Rise because he felt bigger. I felt like I could appreciate the Volvidon monster model more. And it just felt more armadillo. Like if you put them side by side, yes, Rise and 3U, they're both armadillos. But it just felt more of an armadillo in 3U. I can't quite explain it. Maybe it's because it felt bigger, it had more detail. <clears throat> I don't, I can't believe a 3U game had more detail than a Rise game, but just better impression it's a consistent theme in 3u um and i dabbled with the lance now i don't know why it was the lance oh i'm still scarred from the the laggy failed quest i got to three weeks ago like that still echoes in my mind the fact that i could not beat the laggy and i was really frustrated in it in that quest that was the capture quest because i carded three times I couldn't get damage up fast enough. And on most of my hunts, they're going 20, 30 minutes. Like I'm clearly getting having a DPS problem. Um, it's not my armor, my ar oh, and I got an attack jewel. So my attack is now at plus two and everything else is just taking so long. I feel my DPS should be higher. So I played around with the Lance, the Lance isn't for me. I'm not about standing in one place and going bop, 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 bop. Just, that's not for me. It's, I like to move around the monster. I don't like to be uh, in, immovable rock so <clears throat> I, I went up against diablos once again with the uh, long sword and you know diablos and i we go back and i was getting a little bit of ptsd because i'm like well i'm not feeling confident in 3u here i go with a weapon that i clearly have not <clears throat> mastered properly and the diablos fight was a struggle uh, if my sword was not losing sharpness from bouncing, I was having troubles creating openings to do swooshity swoo, and I could only get like one, two hits, and then I had to dodge out of the way because Diablos was coming at me fast. Um, that was a long fight that went, I think, over a half hour. I thought I was either going to time out or cart. Like, I was getting exhausted fighting freaking low rank Diablos, and this was not working for me. So, after that, and Diablos was once again intimidating, I have to say. It, it, had, it gave me some very similar vibes to my world encounter. So I was like, all right, let's try Rathalos, my old pals. And Rathalos was a fun fight with a longsword. So it's crazy like how the, the matchup can really change your experience. Um, I had also, okay, so I had also grinded out a better sword for Rathalos because I did suspect my sword was maybe just under upgraded. So I leveled up to a Ragi sword and this one inflicts poison. And I think it's one of the bigger, uh, the more advanced swords I can get after that. The, the parts just aren't available to me. And going up against Rathlos, I felt Rathlos created more 
um, openings for me to punish him with. And I don't know if that's, I really don't want to say it's because I know Rathalos better. I don't think I do, but he was just, I don't know, like something click where I'm like, oh, he's about to land. So before he lands, I can like get my sword out so that when he lands, my sword hits and I can get two more hits before he prepares his next attack. It was just the, the amount of time he had to attack with Rathalos between his attacks was better for Longsword. <clears throat> and I had a really good fight with him. So it was, and he was getting poison. And overall, that fight felt like what it should for where I was in my progression. Then comes Baryoth. The next fight was Baryoth, and that was the one that was killing me. I just, I was getting hit, and I was not hitting enough to be, like, it was not a fun fight. It was a struggle. I finally killed him, and it was not a victorious kill. It was constantly trying to chase oh and my god the the there's like little roggies that are like putting me to sleep oh the trash monsters were such a problem in the last stream everywhere i went to fight a monster the little trash monster would give me little smacks and it was so consistent they like were just pushing on the nerve and like just let me do my fight stay out of this trash monster you are trash stop trying to climb the ranks and so I'm like, this is not going to work. I can't make my way to G rank with a long sword. So I went back and I was like, okay, let's, let's try some weapons. And I was going to try sword and shield because that was working for me in OG monster hunter. I was like, maybe I can get used to sword and shield and, and some chat. The chat was like, switch axe, switch axe. Just try it one more time. And I remember my first three U stream. I was like, the switch axe is slow, cumbersome and not good. I don't like it, but I'm like, you know what? Let's try it one more time. Let's just see what happens. And I took it out, I went to the, the Moga Woods, and I swung it a few times, and it felt so fast. I am not lying to you. Like, night and day, I am just couldn't believe how fast and fluid the Switch Axe felt. And, you know, the, the reason to explain it is the contrast. So before, I went from literal world and rise mechanics, Switch Axe mechanics, into 3U mechanics, which is going to be a massive slowdown of pace across the board. But to me, I don't know, I think it, I, I related it more to the Switch Axe, but now that I've been weeks and weeks in the 3U world, moving around, understanding how fights are, I think putting a, the old world Switch Axe back into my hands now, I can appreciate it more for what it is. And I've forgotten, well, forgotten, I've kind of forgotten the, um, the mechanics of being able to roll and then switch into your weapons so you know now that i'm more used to this more um strict lot like tighter gameplay of 3u where it's you no know, you watch the monster you you dodge the attack and then you create your opening and i'm like oh i can get like two three hits here oh i can switch to sword here it's not like the switch acts of world and rise where you are constantly de dealing damage but in the mindset of get your attacks reset adjust get your attacks reset adjust I'm like i can probably make this work and i started looking at the numbers and i was like oh my god the switch axe can get a lot more damage than the longsword without the whole charging business and you know that's that's the game of the longsword you have to charge it up to get really its full potential out potential out whereas the switch axe there's a bit of charging but for the most part if you are just swinging the axe around you're still going to deal some good damage and so i went out and i practiced on a few uh, lower rank monsters just to get a sense for it and it was you know it was feeling a little bit clunky but i was getting my hop and oh man i missed the switch axe hop it just felt so good you're in the monster's face smack smack hop and that little hop is just everything you need to often dodge things now i say that now i've heard three of you have some really unforgiving hitboxes i haven't met them yet so we'll see so i i upgraded a switch axe because i was starting i definitely was feeling a lot more comfortable with it um so i spent two hours freaking farming nibble snarf we went to multiplayer because i needed three claws from a nibble snarf and oh my god the hunted so many nibble snarf because the rn the rng was just not dropping claws for me um so i finally got to see what happens when you bomb it when you bomb the nibble snarf and you can fish in it and the, oh my god i couldn't get in until multiplayer because when i tried to fish it uh, a little stupid fish smacked me and then my bombs weren't working there's one cool thing i really did i'm really proud of it so i really want to pull off my invasion sensation it's different because you don't stick this one in the monster you just kind of burr on the outside um so i was about to i mean i'm still going to call it an invasion sensation it's just not so invasive um invasion sensation on the nibble snarf and you turn around and i blew 
phrasing. I did the blast around his mouth and that created oh, the same yeah. oh, uh, effect as if you had eaten a bomb. So he's open. I didn't even know you could do that. I'm like, oh my God, I can invasion sensation and into it. Like, you know what I mean? And I was so excited. I, I tried to replicate it, but it didn't happen. So anyway, I fished him out and uh, yeah, it was kind of cool to fish him. I don't see what the big idea was. I thought I was going to get something out of it, but in multiplayer, everyone else was fishing him out. So I saw a lot more of that. But the fact that you can use booms from your freaking switch axe to blow up the nibble snarf just made me fall that much more in love with the switch axe in 3U. So anyways, I did a cool thing. Uh, got all my parts, all my claws, and I uh, upgraded the axe to the strongest switch axe I could get right now in the water class. So I took the Ludroth axe and I leveled that up to the max I could. So now we're going in and the next one is Agnactor. We've also been, um, I have now learned that the monster I think we are aiming for is this legendary Cetus or Cetus. Sounds silly. I'm probably pronouncing it really bad. Um, Cetus? No, it's C. C, C, C. It's definitely not Cetus, which is what I originally called it Cetus. Um, so yeah, we're after him, but I got an Agnator first. I had met Agnator in Stories 2, so very cool to to see him here in 3U and see how he moves. I knew about his chomper like sound, which is very iconic. I love it. The clack, 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 clack. Um, fun fight. Really love it. I love that there's love on him that you can actually like smack away. The fact that I could actually smack a lot with my switch axe made it even more rewarding. Beautiful dance. I'm having more fun in 3U now that I've moved to the switch axe. And it just feels like it just feels familiar again. It feels so good. And I can't wait until I leave the old world. Actually, I'm going to be playing Rise soon on PC and like to go, actually, that's probably going to mess me up, but to go from like old world switch axe to new switch axe. Oh my God. That's going to feel like so buttery smooth. I think just to not impact my 3U switch axe gameplay, I'm going to avoid switch axe in my Rise second playthrough and I'm going to use some other weapon. Maybe maybe the long sword no probably not some something i don't know i'll play with something else um so yeah i don't know what's after agnector but i'm pretty sure now with my switch x and toe we can finish village rank in 3u and i can finally move on to stage two of this quest which is high rank so looking forward to seeing what waits for me there um looking forward to see how the switch x carries me through this game now and uh, how I'll develop a gameplay for it. So watch, catch me on, I'll see you on a stream, twitch.tv slash official. If you don't watch streams, I'll see you on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. So I met a new elder dragon on my journey, Sedeus, Gadeus, Sedeus, Sedeus, whatever his name is. Anyways, he's not very threatening compared to- Oh, get out of here. Heiji hunts. Welcome back hunters to another Monster Hunter journal. If you're new to the channel, what I do is I pick a Monster Hunter game, I play through it on stream and I document my journey. If you're all about that, please subscribe, follow along, turn on the bell, do that thing that all the YouTubers tell you to do for there is a new journal most weeks, every week where I progress through Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate currently and I have just finished low rank. We are now in high rank where everything torments you, hurts you, and makes you shake back and forth, especially the freaking pickle. I met the pickle. Anyways, here's a recap of what went on in, in the last few weeks. It's been a while since I shared an update, despite me saying I just said that I post everything. So leaving, getting close to low rank, we had finished uh, fighting Aknaktor, and I had an extra stream. I had just moved over to the Switch Axe, and now I'm like, you know what? I got to I gotta get my Switch Axe collection in order. I've been focusing so long on the Longsword, I'm a little bit low on the resources for the for the Switch Axe. And so I started grinding some stuff, grinded my Hunter rank. I think I'm at Hunter rank three or four now in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Uh, got a bunch of new ingredients for my canteen, got a bunch of new ingredients to build a Switch Axe. So now I've got a Water Switch Axe and a Fire Switch Axe. For the Water, I went with the Ludroth Switch Axe and for the Fire, I went with the Kurupeko Switch Axe you know, because I love that thing so much. So the ingredients is interesting because I'm starting to learn what ing what type of ingredients to mix. Like if you're mixing your milk with your bread, who does that? Or if you're mixing your fish with your milk, also who does that? Uh, the types of abilities that it gets also depending on the type of cooking you do. And I discovered that one of them is basically a divine blessing. So an editor better not be like putting that stupid divine blessing meme everywhere, which I don't even, I don't even understand the memes that are in this video half the time. So anyways, it's called like defensive something. 
and it, it it lowers the damage you take sometimes maybe if the game feels like it and i've been kind of, it's been my go-to and i don't remember it by heart but i think it's if you put bread and fish together that you get that so i unlocked more fish which lets me get um more stars which means more health if i'm understanding all that right uh, so we did that in multiplayer. It was a good time. Now I have two axes to play with, and it's great because uh, the fire axe is great for my water monsters, and the water axe is good for all the volcano monsters I've been fighting. So the next new monster that was up on our um, kill all list was Uragan, and I just so happened to have my water axe. He, you know, I was going into this fight really not expecting to like him because I don't, I didn't enjoy fighting him in world too much because he just makes my axe bounce everywhere. In this one, he was, I mean, he's slower, like every other monster, and everything was just kind of flowing a lot better until I, I succumbed to the chat pressure, which was like, break the chin, break the chin. And I was like, how do you guys want me to break the chin? I just keep like bouncing off the chin. I don't want to hit the chin. The chin is like the obvious part you don't want to hit on Uragon. And they're like, use the mind's eye, your sword. And I was like, oh yes, I forgot that I have the part of the switch axe that doesn't bounce. And so I'm like, all right, let's try on the chin. And so I got like slapped around by the chin a few times. And finally, after a few more, um, you know, I don't even know what to call them, swing, swoosh, whatever, uh, the chin broke and then I could slice my axe, my sword, anything I wanted to, right through this guy's face. And so Uragon after that was was pretty much done. I let, I was wondering if they would still have him roll. He doesn't roll the same way in World, which I think is better. Like he has a committed, he has two rolls. He has the one where he goes up on the mountain. And he's like, look at me. And then he dirt bikes all the way around you. That one's cool, I like that. And then sometimes he'll, he'll roll in a small area that he just kind of bounces back and forth. Like he'll just roll maybe once or twice just to reposition. Not a big fan of that, but it still feels less roly-poly than my initial impression of world. And I just had an idea because I am a, I am getting so many different perspectives of this universe, franchise, and monsters. I think I need to go back to world after I'm done with all of this to, to see world through a whole different lens. So you know what? Let's add on to the, to the eight-layer cake of Monster Hunter we're already on because I already committed to 3U, 4U, GU. Add in another visit to World, because why not? I'm revisiting Rise, and I'm, oh, why, there's never enough Monster Hunter. Hey. So, finished him, which unlocked the final uh, quest for low rank, which is the Cedeus quest. And this one, I was terrified, because I, I heard it was an Elder Dragon. I heard it was underwater. And I have not really gone back to underwater fights since my laggy uh, massacre, and that is the massacre where he massacred me. So, I've been absolutely terrified of getting into that zone and so i went in uh the chat was all hyped they're like oh it's gonna happen it's gonna happen i was like oh no if the chat's excited i know it's gonna be painful for me so i got like i got all my items i'm like all right let's go let's go i got the mask on the kids let's put on uh our fighting face and let's see what this is all about so pleasantly surprised to see that there's just three pieces of the map i'm like okay so i'm not gonna be running around too much this is good or swimming around then i jump and i see this magnificent beast the size of this thing. just like it, it kind of reminded me of the monster not the, really the monster but the creature from the never-ending story and now the editor is probably going to put it next to each other and you guys are going to be like what are you thinking about but i'm going completely off nostalgia and like memory i just remember the thing flying in the sky and never-ending story being the same color has fur and has a beard and I'm pretty sure cedeus has all of those features so he's swimming slowly in the water. I was like, well, that's not very fearsome. And the music is, is really like slow and kind of like epic. And I was like, all right, I like the music. I like this. And I'm like, I'm going to slice this thing. And I'm just like flailing in the water, not hitting anything because I have so much troubles with depth perception. And I know I'm not the only one. That's one of the issues with underwater is the depth perception. <laughs> and when it's this big, you just don't know because like the closer you get your screen your camera just fills with fur and you're like am i close enough to the fur or and a lot of the times i wasn't so i'm like okay this is okay this is doable and i'm a little bit like cautious i'm like all right let's get in here let's let's attack the back and then let's attack the tail no the tail wags too much all right let's go let's go near the beard okay the beard's okay but sometimes he shakes so let's stay on the back and i'm kind of being like cautious and everything and the, the music just like dun, dun, dun. like it reminds me of the i know it's it reminds me of the hyrulean castle theme from breath of the wild but it isn't um it's more it's it's a different epic same epic t type different song uh and then we're going and then we make it to the second scene and at this point i'm i'm getting a little bit disappointed i was like wait a minute is this is this all we're doing are we just 
following this thing and bashing it wherever we want because this is kind of boring. Um, and then finally the chat's like, we should tell them so that we don't have to go through all this. So I learned that you have to deal a certain amount of damage to trigger the third, the second phase. And that's when they're like, just hit him in the beard. The beard's his weak spot. So I like, all right, let's slice up his beard. And finally we made it to the third area when locked the other area. I was like, all right, all right, now I'm on guard. Let's see what goes on. And now he's like moving up and down slowly. And I'm, I'm swimming and I'm trying to catch up and he's not really attacking like too intensely. He's doing like little whirlpools, he's blowing, blowing his water. And uh, the, the dude from the village is like, you gotta break the horns, which makes it even harder because now the target has just shrank from this massive hairy beast or beard to a little like horn that when he like moves his head like that, he just moved five kilometers from you. And you're like, oh, you're just like trying to swim through the water. It's really difficult. And so I'm like struggling to swim here, bonk, bonk. He like just breathes himself away. And then I'm trying to swim over there and bonk, bonk. And then finally people are like, there's the Dragonator, get the Dragonator. I'm like, oh, is this the button? And they're like, yes, yes. I'm like, all right, we got to wait for the moment. And then he swam through and I missed the moment. I was like, oh, it's okay. Another moment will come back. And the moment came back, hit him with the Dragonator. And I was starting to get confident because I'm like, oh, he's not going to hit me like laggy was. So I can get up more in his face. And so I did, I was getting up in his face and people were like, oh no, he's gonna time out because you have less time. You have like 35 minutes uh, to do this. And I broke one horn and I got him with the Dragonator and everyone's like, oh my God, is he gonna do it? And like the pressure was there. And then I timed out. And that is one of the, oh, it's so embarrassing to time out when you have an audience because you know, when you die, like dying's embarrassing, but like timing out is, it's, it's almost worse because it's, it's not like you suck and it's not like you're good for sure. It's just so mediocre. It's like you timed out, buddy. So anyways, I timed out. I was like, ah, oh, and then I'm like, oh no, I got to do all this again. And so I went back in. Um, I'm, I was happy to discover that all of the damage you inflicted on it carries over. So I was literally back in for five minutes and I repelled him. So he doesn't count towards my pledge because I didn't slay him or capture him, but I repelled him. And as I was thinking back on that, I was like, that was... I mean, that was, fu that was fun because it was less intense than I was expecting it in a way. But I'm thinking back to all the, other, all the other Elder Dragons I've fought in all the other games and everything except um, Ibushi and Narwa because I'm still not a fan of those floaty things. Actually, they, this dude is on the same level as Ibushi and Narwa. I just realized because Ibushi and Narwa are flying and flailing in the air. This guy's flailing in the water slowly. It's the same thing. Actually, I think I even made a comment on stream of like, oh, this reminds me of the Ibushi fight. Uh, except the game takes a, doesn't try to shove proof of the hero, proof of a hero on it, which is like, okay, you're respecting me as a player. So when you compare it to all of the, like the other Elder Dragons, like World, all the Elder Dragons, like Teostra, the, the, the dead thing, the um, like Valstrax and Rise, like all these cool Elder Dragons. And then you've got grandpa floats them and it's just not really like on the same scale it's majestic but i was expecting it to have a little bit more bite and now i might live to regret these words because i only repelled it so maybe there's a harder fight down the road but where i'm at right now initial impressions cool but was expecting more so that's where we are with c deus um it was a lot easier than i thought and i have to say i actually took the time to look at his armor, like full armor set online, because the small pieces I saw of the Helios uh, armor set looked fantastic. I was like, oh, I want that, but I have no parts. And that is the story of AJ and Monster Hunter 3U. Oh, I want that, but I have no parts. Like seriously, after two streams of grinding with multiplayer, grinding by myself, I'm like, surely I've amassed something to buy some, like I'm, I'm hoping I have something that I can buy. Nope, my armor list, the forging list, it's all grayed out. I still can't build anything. That is eight hours of gameplay and I still cannot build anything. If you do not commit and focus on one piece of armor and actively try to pursue it for like dozens of hours, you are not getting some armor in this game. So that's a little bit frustrating. So with that, we unlocked high rank and the pain gates have opened because high rank is always, we all know what high rank does. So I wasn't looking forward to the pain from this. And so the first quest, poop, Purple Ludroth, I almost called him Poopoo Ludroth, that'd be funny. You wouldn't be so purple then. Um, I, you go in, I went in expecting the worst 
and it was a really fun time. I had a great time with Purple Ludra. I'm like, ah, shoot, it's a poison monster. It's high rank. It's going to hit me hard. It's going to poison me. It's going to be a terrible time. But we got Switch Axe power now, and I know Ludroth's moveset. And for the most part, Purple Ludroth doesn't really have a different moveset. He's just poisoning. And so I'm like, ah, come here, you big purple banana. And I'm like jumping everywhere, swoosh, swoosh, do the hop. The hop is what makes it so lovely because I'm just like swooshing, swooshing. And then he goes to roll. I'm like, uh, just a little hop. Uh, so everything went well. You poisoned me a few times and the chat was betting against me like to faint. And I didn't realize until like halfway through the fight. And for the most part, I was like doing really good. And then I stumbled at one point and like my HP came down. I was one hit away from dying. And like you have, I could feel the chat lean in of like, <gasps> and then I just like make a potioned up and they're like, ah, it's, it's fun. Chat's a good time. So purple Ludroth was good. Oh, and this also introduced my new favorite level of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and potentially my favorite level of the entire franchise, the Misty Peaks. Why did they not include this in Monster Hunter Rise? I really hope they put it in Sunbreak because this level is so much better than everything else. Like, I've been introduced to so many volcano, water level, not water, but like foresty levels, desert levels, but nothing as beautiful as a Misty Peak. Like, this thing is beautiful. I'm like, I love this level. This is my favorite level of 3U so far. Um, so love fighting in there. And then after that, um, I clearly was taking a lot of damage with my hits because I'm still in low rank armor. So I was like, all right, let's get back. Uh, let's get a high rank version of my armor. So the great Jaggy. So I fought the great Jaggy to start harvesting his parts. And then the whole chat was like, go fight the Crimson Kurapeko, go fight. And I was like, I've been playing dumb for the most part up to this about the Crimson Kurapeko. But I was like, look, I'm going to, I'm going to be clear with all of you guys. I know what the Crimson Kurapeko summons. I know everybody was looking forward to me fighting that thing so that it can call his friend the Big Angry Pickle. I knew because I I think that's what he does in stories and also some of you spoiled it in the comments. So I was like, uh, I'll do Crimson Kurapeko later. But don't worry, you guys got you guys got me anyways because as I was looking to farm more um, jag great Jaggy parts, there was a quest called the Jaggy of Menace. And I was like, oh, I should probably do this. This this looks like it'd be easy. A lot of Jagias to hunt. I can get some parts for my armor. And the chat was like, yeah, yeah. Or no, specifically one of the viewers was like, yeah, yeah, do that one. And I was like, oh, that's weird that chat would be excited for me to fight Jaggies. But my guard was completely down. So I was like, all right, let's go. Okay, we're killing the Jaggies. I'm having a good time. I'm relaxed. And then I go to the area where there's like five of them. I was like, perfect. We can finish the quest. And then boom, what? out of nowhere. Since it's when? the freaking angry that. pickle like devil joe i was like what are you doing here you're supposed to be in the crimson crew pickle quest why are you in this quest so i actually got caught off guard in high rank i thought i was gonna be ready and i'm like oh how am i gonna react to like crimson crew pickle when he shows up am i gonna have to like fake it uh, i'm a terrible faker by the way so you got my genuine reaction of fear where I'm like, I wasn't ready to face them. I didn't want to face the, the, the angry pickle. And uh, I ran away, <laughs> killed my, my prey, and then booked it out of there. I'm like, I don't want to do that. And then again, everyone's like, Crimson Crew Pickle. I'm like, no, no, we're not doing that. I am not leveled up. My gear's not leveled up. I can't do anything. I pick the quest and I pick Siren Song. Like I'm trying to like find the like baby stuff. And stupid Siren Song, I did not read the quest because I was distracted. I thought it was just Hunt a Kurupeko, a normal one. And I needed parts for my Switch Axe to upgrade that more. I was like, oh, this will be easy. We'll do one Kurupeko, it'll be a good time. I land and, and I see after like people are like, did you read the quest description? I was like, no, why? And I pull it up in quest and it's like slay five Kurupekos in the time limit or like survive the limit with at least two uh, Kuropeko slain and I'm like oh my god what did I just sign up for so I go after the first one which is a fair struggle but it's going better than when I fought him in low rank with a long sword summons a Rathian who just smacks me out of nowhere like half my health gone I was like oh no what am I gonna do I'm just panicking and sweating so it was a huge struggle like 15-20 minutes of trying to dodge the Rathian get out of the zone paintball the Kuropeko trying to isolate him bonk him make sure to break his sack so that he doesn't call friends and then like after that sweat was done another Kurupeko shows up and I was like oh I gotta do this one more time like you had to do two minimum up to five maximum in the quest and it's it's crazy because I'm at the point where I'm now making my genuine bad decisions out of trying to avoid the troll of the chat I am trolling myself 
and it's it feels feels rough man feels rough um luckily i did kill the second kurupeko and i think i had carded twice so i was very close to dying and i was just like i don't i don't want to fail i don't want to fail i don't want to lose all this progress um but i passed i made it and those were my early days in the higher rank i am not looking forward to seeing what the rest of this is but i also am because i'm kind of a masochist that way but yeah next step let's get some armor let's keep buffing up the sword let's keep polishing those skills let's keep punching these monsters down because we got to go up to g rank and there are 30 monsters left to slay until this pledge is complete so we got some work to do so I'll see you on the next stream or on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Gathering parts and grinding monster parts in Old Monster Hunter can really be a massive chore. But I'm not sure if I love it, hate it, or like it. Pidgey Hunts. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate Journal as I journey my way through slaying all 52 monsters in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and sharing my journey with you. There are now 28 monsters left as the Crimson Kurupeko, I know it's Kurupeko, I just want to put an accent on it, and the Pankrathian have fallen, and now we, I don't know what's next. Actually, I do know what's next. Plesioth is next. Oh my goodness. But today's theme, I want to talk about the grind, the Monster Hunter grind, and I was going to come to this video to really complain about how rough it is, because I spent a good, well, I mean, I got through the grind this past week, of getting into high rank, getting my first high rank armor by grinding with friends, viewers. We we grinded together and we killed so many Jagyas, so many Ludroths, and a little bit of Kurupeko to season the mix to get all my stuff. And when you're when you're doing that by yourself, it's rough. But when you do it in multiplayer, it's not so bad. And then there's the grind of mining and gathering, which I think I spent 30 minutes swimming around the flooded forest trying to get some, what do you call this thing? Pel pelagocyte? Pelagocyte? I can't speak. I don't know how to pronounce half these words. Uh, and I, I, did I get it? I don't even know if I finally got it in the end. I want to say yes, but I want to also believe that I gave up. And that was frustrating to some points. And as I was like, John, my thoughts of like, all right, how am I going to complain and justify that this is bad? And I was thinking of my more recent experiences in World specifically, and I was remembering um, when I was trying to overcome, I think it was, yes, Arc Tempered Valkana. And about an hour before the stream, um, I needed these parts to make a Nergigante axe because I wanted to try going after Arc Tempered Valkana with a different strategy. I wanted to go uh, and fight her with... Um, what, the Elder Seal skill, which was only available in Nergigante Act. But for anyone who might not be familiar with that journey, I spent five streams, 20 hours, hunting the Elk Tempered Valkana before I finally fell. You can catch that in some older journals. So I was reflecting on that and I was gathering parts. And to make this like super Nergigante Axe, I needed to go into the Guiding Lands and find a specific ore that only blooms after you get the super big ore, which means you have to gather until like a bar fills up so that the big deposit shows up and then you can mine it and hopefully get it. And I remember I was, I didn't hate that the way that I'm being frustrated with three ultimate. I was like, huh, let's reflect on that for a moment. And it's not much of a difference. I think it's more of a realization. Arc Tempered Valkana was a massive wall for me and it was one I was determined to overcome. And I was like, all right, how do I do this? And I'm picking up stuff and I'm trying to build stuff. And it felt like I was, the gathering was part of my experience as a hunter to figure out how to overcome this massive wall using the resources I have. And here I was gathering, I'm like, I'm going to build this axe. It's going to be so cool. And the fact that it wasn't so easy that I can just go to a shop and be like, I want to buy that axe. All right, that doesn't work. Let's try this out. But the fact that I had to do my research online and then I took some ideas here, ideas there. I went into the game. I went and got my stuff. Like it was a mission, it was a journey and it was great. So when the stream came on. I was like, look, I got all the parts. We're building the sacks. And it felt like you gathered those parts to build the sacks. It was rewarding. Whereas I think in three ultimate, the main difference is it's not so much. I'm fighting a wall as much as I'm aware that there is a difficulty gap that I must preemptively, uh, fill so that I don't get whooped like crazy. And I think that's the biggest difference because in three ultimate right now, I'm doing it more preemptively and there's not necessarily a purpose for it other than just making sure I'm ready to take on high rank. And so I think when you contextualize the gathering and the grind, it's very different because I remember also in world, 
my first wall, scary wall was Anjanath. And after I killed him, I told everybody, all the viewers, I said, let's go. We're doing multiplayer and we are destroying this T-Rex until I am covered in Anjanath. And we got everything and it was fun. So I think when you grind with a purpose, oh man, that is rewarding. That is good stuff. And that's something that should not go away. But when you're grinding for maybe the sake of collection or for the sake of maybe a lesser purpose, like getting ready for a high rank, which is kind of more of an abstract purpose, I think it's less satisfying. So anyways, uh, while I was hunting all of that stuff in multiplayer, we, um, we did a few other funny quests, funny quote unquote. Uh, I also did my first event quest this past week. So I think the event quest was called Bullfango Streaking. So some viewers asked to do it and I was, I was expecting a quest similar to the moss swine quest in world where they all like one hit you. And so I was going, I was like, oh, I'm naked. Oh no, I'm gonna get hit by like these pigs. And I got hit by one of them and my health went like, gloop, like it barely moved. And I was like, wait a minute, what is this quest? And everybody's like, ha ha, we're naked. But like, we're really not. These hunters in their streaking mode are probably more covered than like 50% of you in your pajamas. Because I know a lot of you sleep with not so many pajamas because statistics. So the Balfango streaking was a little bit of a letdown. There were 20. So what's weird is you have to hunt 20 pigs basically in with no armor. And they spawn like five or six at a time, but they're not all Balfangos. So you'll get three Balfangos and three of these other like dinosaur things that are just filler. And it's like, why are the, why is the filler there? Just give me 20. And I guess the Wii U or the 3DS wasn't able to like support 20 Balfangos in an arena. If there were 20 Balfangos and they could one shot you, that would be funny. But the fact that we're just most of the time waiting for these pigs to spawn just so we can like three shot them not so exciting so looking forward to seeing what all the other event quests have to follow uh have to offer but uh just the quest name was pretty funny i like that after that i think it was to upgrade either the weapon or the anyways i did get my jagia high rank armor for the most part i don't have every part because i'm missing things and it takes forever to get things one i need the pelagosite pelagosite armor i don't even or it's for my axe upgrade. I wasn't able to upgrade any of my axes. I got some armor. I was like, good enough. Let's go. I went after Cr Crimson Kurupeko. We all knew what was coming with Crimson Pur Kurupeko. We know he's best buds BFF with the pickle. So I'm like, all right, let's load up on some poo. Because when that dino comes, I don't know. Dino. Is he a dino? Kind of feels like a dino. I am going to shove his face with the smelly poo. And so I got a bunch of dung bombs. I ate for dung bomb expert or something. And using that strategy, which I have to admit, I didn't come up all with my own chat, did help a little bit with it. Um, one specific individual in chat helped who is a VIP of the channel. So it's all fair. Uh, Cr Crimson Krupeko was actually quite manageable, especially with a switch ax. So the first time I took on a Krupeko, I had a long sword. I was still le learning how to use the long sword and I don't think I ever properly learned how to use it, but I can appreciate it more now because I understand what I don't know and I know what I need to learn to fill my skill gap with longsword and i'm just not invested in doing that this time so anyway switch x Crim crimson crow peck was easy he summons oh, the pickle no. you throw the poo I the missed. pickle goes away and then you're good you just keep slapping on the duck and then it dies so crimson crow peck was uh i was terrified of it because of devil joe and i was like how am i gonna deal with devil joe but once the poo came into the equation it was good then pink rathian you guys know i like my rathians the pink rathian i met in world and I remember not liking her much because mostly poison. But I have to say, I don't think I properly learned how to fight her in world because I didn't revisit her a lot. I did it the first time you had to fight her. I, I somehow managed my way through it. In 3U, I took a lot more of my time to study the, the, the Pink Rathian, figure out how she ticks, how she does the disco dance in the air. I don't quite remember that being a thing in world. And it was a nice tit for tat. Like I, I was getting the advantage, then I was like getting weak on my stamina, my shit, and then, uh, uh, my health, and then getting poison. And then she was like turning the tables on me. I was like, oh no, I'm about to die. And then I would like find a place to he heal, eat some steak, sharpen the sword. And I'm like, all right, we're back in. And then I would pound on her and then we'd break the wing, break the, the tail. I literally broke everything on this thing, except for her back. I, did, I broke her, her head, her wings, her tail. And it was um, an awesome, awesome fight. Like it, 
I almost died, then I didn't, and then she almost died, and but then she finally did. Uh, it was just a great back and forth, and this really accentuates, like to me, what a good fight is. You don't want it to be too easy. It's okay to have the one-off monster that's too hard, but when you are journeying your way to endgame, you want to have these nice mini fights that it's just like, oh, I'm getting slammed, oh, I'm owning it, oh, I'm getting slammed, and that back and forth, it's beautiful it feels amazing that's why i play this game um so in the end I, I got her and for all of my grind struggles and complaints i was rewarded with a ruby a rathian ruby i think is what they're called the rare drop and i was like oh finally like the the rng gods shine on me or whatever um and then i went to see like oh should i should i buy like armor oh i can buy so many things as soon as you get the one rare drop like the entire armor menu just unlocks for you they're like yes sir i see you with a gem and a ruby or whatever it is please buy whatever you like i've decided not to buy things because it is so rare and i'm not understanding what i want and what i want to build and the armor set from the pink Rathian did not seem to have the right skills for my playstyle. So I'm just going to hoard onto this ruby for now because these things are so rare. And uh, we'll come back to it later when I specifically know I want something. Um, so that's where we are. I checked. So this unlocked the next urgent quest. So we're still, I think, in six star, the first level of high rank. And now I just unlocked the urgent quest, which is Plesia Plesioth. And I have heard so much about this boy's hips. And I have never fought him. This will be my first time fighting Plesioth, like, properly. I fought him in stories, too, but that's an RPG. It's different. So next Thursday, we got a match with Plesioth. I'm going to learn what all these hips are about. And I don't know if I'm looking forward to it because I've only heard nightmares and traumatizing stories about this boy. Um, but finally, I will understand the pain that is Plesioth. So I'll see you all on that stream or on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. It's finally happened. I've seen the fish with the thighs. Yes, Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another Hey J Hunt's journal, where I document my entire journey going through Monster Hunter games. It started off with World, it continued in Rise, and now we're in 3 Ultimate, as I pledge to fight all 52 monsters in this game. I have now slain over half of them, and there are 25 monsters left that elude me. So today we're going to be talking about all sorts of good things, like Plesioth, what's it called, Baleful Giginox, and especially a Gen Moran, which I've got a lot of good things to say. But first of all, I have to say thank you to our sponsor, Boxu, this month for supporting the channel with some delicious snacks from Japan. So for those who don't know, this is a premium Japanese snack subscription box that comes directly from Japan every month. Uh, and the keyword is premium. So you don't just get your regular old snacks, but you get some good stuff. And this month, I love the theme because it is Pink Valentine. And if we know who may have sent this, if we were in the Monster Underworld, you know that this would come from my my girl Pink Rathian because it is the Pink Valentine. So every month you get a book, it tells you a little bit about where your snacks come from from around Japan, and then you get a little description on all the snacks. And usually you also get a haiku, which I have not been reading the last few times, but here's the haiku. I'm not sure if this is for this box or next box, but it says, we can't wait for spring and the tasty treats it brings. Let's have a picnic. At least I think that's a haiku. So beautiful artwork i mean i just love the design of this but anyways your snack is pictured here you get the word of what it is and then you get some details as to uh the flavor whether it's sweet salty or whatever it says if it's vegetarian or not it says if it also contains other allergies that you um might want to be aware of for example common allergens milk tree nuts soy so super safe to share with your family friends and you get a ton of stuff in this japanese subscription look at this you get all the things a hunter needs to have a successful hunt who needs a valentine when you got boxu because this is the this is the the, the partner that keeps on giving every month and you never fight with it because it always just gives you snacks. Not saying that people fight when they're in relationships. Definitely don't take that in the wrong way. But anyways, if you're interested, I've got a code for you. I believe it's HeyJ10. It's on the screen. And you can get your own Japanese snack subscription yourself from Boxu and enjoy some goody snacks for yourself or for your Valentine, whoever they may be. All right, so Plesioth is up first on deck. I have heard so much about this fish and especially its thighs. I was a little bit nervous of Plesioth. So I made sure all my axes were upgraded, especially my fire one. So now I've got, I've still got my two, my fire axe, my water axe, and they are upgraded to the most that they can. They are the Kurex, 
Kuru Pex Spander Axe and the Splish Splax. Splish Splax. I really appreciate Capcom's humor in this game or the Monster Hunter team. Uh, honestly, I went in and outside of its thighs, I can't say much <laughs> oh, about Plesyoff. I have heard that this is its best implementation and I can probably see why because I had no troubles with him. He was a really good fight, a really fun fight, and I have no complaints on Plesyoth. He did not leave a negative impact on me. In fact, he's a little bit derpy when he runs around. <laughs> When he runs away from you on land with those thighs. I can't get enough of the Plesioth thighs. And I never would have imagined this fish ran the way it did. But I, just looking at him run, like I could watch this thing run for a good hour. And I would be happy every day if I did that. So I can't say much about Plesioth other than he was a good fight. In the water, he was like, he projected enough that I could... I could dodge everything on land. I felt way overpowered on top of him. Um, he's He was bigger than I thought, and uh, it was a fun fight. So plus one for Plesioth. Uh, then the next one I was able to fight is the Jade Baroth, which I was like, oh, Baroth was easy. How much, how much different can a Jade Baroth be? And I did not realize how much faster the Choo Choo could be. This thing, when it charges you, it's like... Like, it just charges you so, so much faster. I couldn't believe it. But other outside of the charge, um, it was a pretty comfortable fight. I do like the more snow element of it. I prefer its color. I think I I think I like the Jade Baroth fight more than the regular Baroth. Just because of the snow, though. I prefer snow over mud. And then that happened uh, two streams ago. And pretty much for the rest of the stream, I was busy trying to build my sand ship. So... Um, I spent most of my hunts after the Jade Baroth fighting Rathians and Baroths so I could build a ship to take on Jen Moran. And man, even after killing so many Rathians and Baroth, I still can't make armor. This game is so rough. I don't even know why I bothered to put an armor count counter. I've been putting 40 plus hours into this game so far and I only have one armor set to talk about. It's, it's not going to go higher than five by the time I finish this game, I think. Uh, the Jan Moran fight though, so I, I started the next stream with all the parts I need to do that. And I have to say, hands down, the best siege fight I have ever... I didn't even know it was going to be a siege fight. But this is how you do a siege fight. So out of all the siege fights I've had, so this one is better than all the world fights, all of the rise fights, anything that is siege, just so much better. I love that it's it almost feels like a high speed chase where you, you know you're you're going down the 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 desert on your ship it's coming up on the either side and you have to use all of this weaponry. I went in completely not knowing what to do. Chat told me it would be a little bit confusing. I was like, "Chat, don't tell me. I don't want to know." And I went out there and I discovered how to use you know, you, you've got your, your ballistas, you've got the ballista with the wires to to like anchor it down. You got the cannons, you got a huge bong, you got a dragonator. Am I missing anything else? Oh yeah, you can jump on it and, and use your axe. It was just such a good balance of, I'm using the tools and it's a whale, it's massive. It felt like a proper hunt. Um, outside of, oh, let me just finish before I compare it to the, to the siege. So honestly, did not know what I was doing at all. Um, I didn't know what was doing damage. I didn't even really know where to hit it. Like I was trying to like bounce my axe off its tusk at one point, then I put a barrel bomb on it. I don't even know if I heard it, but event eventually, uh, I made it to phase two where your ship is kind of like crashed and then the the Gen Moran is out in the distance approaching me. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta like go out and meet it before it comes and attacks my ship. And I'm just going out there and I'm like wailing, <laughs> wailing on a whale. I love it. So I'm wailing on this whale and I just don't know what's going on. I just know that it's moving slowly like towards my ship. I'm like, no, don't hit my ship, don't hit my ship. And I'm just like, because I'm bouncing a little bit and also hitting it. And then he got close to my ship and I'm freaking out because I'm like, this whale is going to destroy my ship. So I run back. I was like, oh, the dra like I can see the Dragonator is pointing at it now. So I'm like, oh, I can I use like the Dragonator. So I like slap that button. We Dragonator it. The proof of a hero takes off. I was not expecting that. I'm like, oh my God, is this what's supposed to happening? And I'm just like running out. <laughs> I'm literally feeling like this, like I'm running flailing my axe everywhere, not knowing what I'm doing, hitting his toes. I'm just like on the toes. It was chaos. It was madness. And I lost because he blew up my ship. I didn't even know that could happen. So I went back in. I'm like, okay, let's be a little bit smarter. Let's let's go a little bit more strategic in what I'm doing. So I was using the cannons more, the ballista more. I, I learned that the bong is to avoid him from hitting the ship. I learned that the ship has health that you have to avoid. So you look in your status to see how damaged your ship is. Um, I had 
pre-triggered the Dragonator the first time, so this time I knew to wait. And as he was coming towards the front of the bow, bow, I just hit the Dragonator on him. It was so satisfying. And I would go on him, smack him with the axe a few times. I mined a few scales off of him. And then when it came to phase two, this is where I was like a lot more aggressive, using all the cannons, all the ballista, everything I could, running out, hitting his toes as much as I could, hitting the Dragonair, hitting the bong. And I was just doing so much damage. Proof of a hero was going off and the timer was ticking. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just wailing on him. And I'm like, oh, he's gonna destroy my ship. But I'm literally like screaming. It was so freaking intense, at least for me. Um, and then the timer went out. I think the timer went out. And then it, it's like, you have repelled Gen Moran. And I was like, oh, did I win? Did I win? Did I fail? Did I win? What happened? And it was just so intense because I was like, he was flopping. I was like falling on the ground. I'm like, no, I need to do more damage. I need to do more damage. I'm just, I got a second like Dragonator on the second turn. So I got to Dragonator him twice um, in phase two. And man, it was so intense, but it was so fun. I think I was grinning ear to ear. So in comparison, um, you know, if I think of my other siege fights, my first siege fight ever was uh, Zora Magdaros. And I was reflecting on like how that one felt. And the thing is, I didn't feel like a hunter when I was fighting uh, Zora Magdaros. I felt like, like I, Zora Magdaros wasn't threatening. It felt like an, a poor old turtle that's just trying to go to, to its room and you're just attacking it. And it feels really mean. And I don't know, Jen Moran feels a little bit more like a proper prey like it feels young it's moving it's it's big and you're you know it could be an old thing too that you're hunting but it because i think of its speed and its movement it feels like it has more fight to it so it's more satisfying to hunt it um what else do we do with siege weapons the the earlier one that we did in 3u the um, um Sideus, that too was just an old soft fish just moving along and i didn't feel good beating on that either uh, going back to world, Fatalis, I've already shared my thoughts on Fatalis, how, uh, the, I mean, that, that was, yeah, that was definitely intense, but the siege elements, I don't know. It, it, it I don't think, I, the intensity was different. It didn't feel like you were on Fatalis' level when you fought him. It just felt like overwhelming odds. Yeah, that's the difference. Whereas Gemron, it felt like, oh, this is achievable. This is doable. This is like, it's it's more challenge, like it's above our challenge level, but we can do it. Whereas Fatalis is like, why am I here fighting this god, basically? Um, thinking of other siege weapons that come to mind, siege fights, the ones in Rise are just, uh, I think the key element of a good siege fight is the speed. And the fact that with Genmaron, you're on a ship that is moving, and the fact that he is moving creates a sense of dynamic intensity that just isn't present in the other fights. And I think that's really what makes this feel so much more satisfying is the speed. So we need to be moving on siege things. More ships, give me some airships. Like imagine, okay, the Fatalis fight. Imagine if we're on an airship and we're on our way to Castle... S I forget the name of the castle and you have to fatalis is coming after you you're on an airship and imagine you have to take down like you have to repel him because he's trying to take you down before you get to his home base and you're using all the weapons on the ship to like hurt fatalis and by the end he he takes down your ship which lands you on castle the castle and that's where you take off that's where you go on with the fight like it did in world i think that would create a more dynamic and intense intro than just like this big fat dragon literally just sitting there in his castle and you just like oh my god yeah i think that would work a lot better so anyways i love genron i hope we have more i hope that's not the best siege fight ever because um i want more of that so we followed that up with unfortunately a baleful giginox and i was ready to give giginox another chance because i had a terrible experience with my first giginox and i think it was because of the longsword i don't remember if it was giginox that made me lose the long sword, but whatever. This was the first time I was coming with a switch axe. I was like, okay, maybe all my gripes with Gigi Nox are going to be fixed because I have a switch axe. It's not poison. Let's do this. I know what I'm doing. Oh my god, this fight was horrible. It's it, it. This monster is terrible. For all of you who say you love Gigi Nox, I don't understand you. Kazu is so much better. Gigi Nox is constantly hopping. You go here, it hops, it, it shoulder checks you. And when it lands, the air pressure pushes you away. You're about to hit it, it jumps away. It shoots electricity, it bombs electricity. It sucks you from the air. It just 
constantly is doing damage or interrupting you and running away from you. It is just not a pleasant fight. I did not like it. It was definitely better with the switch X than with the long sword, but man, it just moves so much. And really, I don't have much more to say. It's, it's just so annoying because he's always on the move. And I don't know if it's because I need to build a strategy where I immobilize him more, but did not like that fight. But anyways, he's off the list. And then we got the urgency quest to fight the first high rank Rathalos. And this fight was super hard, probably because of my fault. I forgot to eat, so I didn't get any of my skills unlocked. I didn't get my health bonus. And I think I was wearing armor that is weak to fire because the biggest challenge was my health on this fight. And I was taking damage like crazy. For every little mistake, my health would just be like, boom, half of it gone. And that was really tough. So I was down to two carts. I had gone through all of my health items and Rathalos was not showing sign of limping. And I was like, oh no, this, this is not gonna go well. I did have a water ax on my side. So I, I really did not wanna do this uh, fight again. And it was getting so tense. And then he was limping, but I had no healing items. I was two carts in and I was like asking the kids to heal me. And oh man, was it intense. And I love these, like, this is how you enjoy fights in Monster Hunter, that intensity. I love that. But man, it was, it was a close one. I was getting more cautious at the end of like, oh, let's hit it, let's do a hit, let's run away. Uh, the worst thing about this fight is how often Rathalos flies away. Luckily, I was fighting him in his nest, so he'd fly away, I'd grab his egg, and I'd just wait there until he came back. But man, he flew away so many times, it was just really boring to wait for him to come back. So, didn't like that part. Killed him anyways, opened up 8-star quest, the second, last, the second last star rank in high rank, and what's on the menu now is a lot of high rank old friends. There are no new monsters, so my pledge is not going to advance very fast. I've got Laggy on deck, Diablos, Nibblesnarf, Baryoth, Agnector, Uragon, Duram, Boros, all of these monsters I've hunted before, um, but I gotta hunt them again in higher rank. I gotta get some, some uh, armor off these things, gotta upgrade my axe before I can see what the other 25 monsters are. Honestly, I can't believe there's still 25 monsters hiding in this game somewhere. But we've got a grind fest ahead of ourselves. Um, not sure if I'm gonna take all these high rank variants variants high rank versions of these monsters solo first or if i'm just going to go at it in multiplayer but i am going to need to do some multiplayer grinding just to get through this um so that it doesn't take me another month before i can start uh, knocking monsters off my list so the grind begins so i might see you in a week i might see you in two weeks but i got a lot of slang to do and a lot of armor building to do so that i'm not getting pounded on like rathalos just did so i'll see you on the next journal or the next stream and until next time keep it classy i've been on this journey for four months now and i finally found it the bracadillo sack pidgey hunts man it's like a truck Welcome back, Classy Crew, to a Monster Hunter journal, a 3U journal to be exact, as I journey through all of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate to hunt every monster and fulfill my pledge. If you're into that, be sure you've watched all the other videos in the series and subscribe to watch all the other ones coming every week or most weeks. So I am now getting really geared up. Actually, I have all the gear I need now to enter the end game of high rank. I can smell it. We're almost there. We're about to hit the two third part of this game before walking off the ledge into the abominous G rank, which sounds like it's going to be terrifying and almost impossible to do on my own. So before we get into the nightmare, let's talk about what has transpired over the last few weeks. I forgot to mention uh, last time I had to actually unlock the urgent quest after a little bit of high rank grinding for Bracadios, and I took him on last week and he was fun. I had a good time with him. He was really good to fight. Good punchy boy. I actually don't remember too much about him in world World is a whole different chapter of my life at this point and I need to like Re-experience all of world because there's so many things I feel I I can appreciate so much more For example when I met Bracadios in world I was like, oh, that's cool Who's this punchy boy and that was about it and then he came back with the raging Bracadios which terrified the everything out of me it just everything left my body when i fought that thing it was terrifying so now to have fought him in his game as the flagship i don't know he was more more iconic more manageable just a really good fight for me to take on one-on-one -on -one. keep in mind i was learning so many things in world still at the point that i encountered him i didn't even know how to use my weapon properly and you could argue to some degree i still don't know so killed the bracadios 
which means I could hunt him in multiplayer because I got nothing out of killing the first Brachydeos because you get no drops when you kill a monster. So I spent a lot of time in multiplayer grinding it out with some fellow uh, viewers and players who uh, helped me grind out Brachydeos enough to get the Switch Axe, which I forget the name, but it's oh, the axe this? I use. It kind of looks like the axe I used in World until Endgame, and now it's the axe I will use probably till Endgame in 3 Ultimate. Now, there's another evolution of this axe that requires the Brachydeos rare drop, Unfortunately, I didn't get that. So, took the, took the Switch Axe out for a ride, and I was just cleaning <laughs> through monsters. Diablo's gone, Agnector gone, Baryoth gone, Goblo, everything was just falling literally within 10, 15 minutes. Now, I've heard that slime weapons are OP in this game, and I'm not gonna be the one to argue it, because, whoo, I was just singing away, and I was like, oh my god, I have all these high rank monsters to go through that I've already fought, so none of this is gonna go towards my pledge. It's gonna take forever. And I'm just like, switching axe, switching axe, killing everything, and I'm like, you know what? This is kind of fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's okay to have walls. It's okay to have challenges, but it's also okay to have a good, easy time with a fight. I think appreciating Monster Hunter or any game is having a fair balance and not always being slapped around like a fool. Looking at you, Bloodborne and Dark Souls. So after this, I was like, okay, well, my offense is clearly pretty okie day right now. Um, we need to buff up the defense because I'm still in the jaggy year and I have, I, I feel like I'm getting hurt a lot when I get hit. And so the consensus was Volvidon armor is the armor for a Switch X user in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. So I'm like, all right, let's go multiplayer. Let's go hunt some Volvidons only to find out Volvidon is not a monster that you can hunt in uh, in the hub, in, in the hub, you just cannot fight Volvidon high rank with multiplayer. What's up with that Capcom? Why do you hold that for me? So I was like, all right, well, I guess we're going to just hunt it alone. And so I slayed Volvidon after Volvidon after Volvidon. And now I am fully decked out in Volvidon gear. And I've got my third armor set out of like 150 or something. This game is brutal in terms of what it gives you for armor. So with this, uh, I still have my attack up large skill. I have my stun skill, so I can't be stunned and that's thanks to my talisman and a few well-placed gems or decorations. Um, I think I am now immune to tremors. I have evasion plus one, which I will learn to appreciate. And then I have the, I have my first negative skill, so I take more dam- my stamina goes down faster when I'm cold. So I have to make sure to stay warm now because I get extra punished for being cold without a hot drink. And so after, uh, I don't know when was the last time I did this. I think I've, I've put in 10 hours of gameplay since my last journal. I'm finally decked out to take on high rank end game. So now I'm just kind of going through the final uh, quest, trying to find out how do I unlock the next emergency to unlock the final stage of quests for high rank. So I'm probably going to be unlocking that next week uh, or today when this video drops. And um, yeah, hopefully I can make it to the end of high rank and I may be a stream or two away from wrapping up uh, hitting credits on high rank. Now, I've had another breakthrough, which is kind of ridiculous. So I've, I've been wondering how to get the double spit barbecue thing. And I know that I could get it through the trader and I honestly had no idea how it worked. I never had anything to trade this man to get his double barbecue spit. And it took how a 60, 70 hours for me to finally understand this whole game mechanic that was in the game the whole time. So the Mocha Woods. I've known about Mogo Woods and I've known that that's where you get resource points, but I've never actually done it because I was like, why would I go there when I can do all these quests and get money and progress? So this time I actually did it because I wanted to knock off a few things and I I couldn't like I it was so easy to not to get resource points. It was a lot easier than I thought. Everything gives you resource points and then you kill bigger things and even smaller things. You can kill anything you want in the Mogo Woods. I didn't know that you could trade it, or I forgot, that you could trade it for commodities from the chief's son. And the commodities, if you get a rare drop, that's what you use to trade it for uh, something of value with this guy. I was like, oh my God, there's so many items here. This is how I get furniture. This is how I get the masks. And so I took this trading very seriously. And the first thing I did was I bought a poogie that doesn't even look like a poogie. I was so disappointed. I was expecting a nice long pig in my room. Instead, I got whatever's on screen. I got that, a, a two-legged poogie. <laughs> then I went back and I actually got some proper commodities, got my double barbecue double barbecue spit, started knocking out a bunch of um, village requests, started filling up my room with stuff. I got a nice plant next to my bed and I unlocked a bunch of masks, which 
I've also learned that I have not been experimenting and appreciating the mask properly because there's so many, like, you can level up the masks. I knew that, but like, I, I didn't think the masks were a big deal. And people were like, you know, if you pay attention to this game mechanic, you can steamroll monsters. I was like, excuse me, what? And so I looked into it, um, not much, but I just looked at what the options were. I bought an artillery mask that lets Kayamba shoot Chacha out of the mask like a cannon, and then you lose Chacha. But I mean, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to take. It was pretty funny in the fight. I don't know how much damage it does. I don't know if it's valuable. But now there's a bunch of masks in my room. I thought that we just filled the rack with masks. I thought that was how many masks were in this game. But no, the masks are in my bed. They're on the table. They're by the fireplace. They're hanging off the ceiling. Like, how many masks are in this game? Only one way to find out. We're going to keep buying all the masks until I fill up the room. Um, so I've just unlocked a whole little collectible aspect of this game, which might hook me and might distract me from the main pledge I took. Um, but so cool. That's what I love about these games. There's always something new to discover when you think you've gotten most of it understood. The game's like, hey, did you see this? And I saw that when I was going through World the first time, people with hundreds of hours in the game would comment on the journal videos saying, I didn't know that. Wait, you did what? You saw this where? Um, so it's a game that just gets better the more you play with people and the more that you can share stories with other people because everybody plays this game for different reasons. Some people like to experiment with armor. Some people like to experiment with, I don't know, whatever else you can experiment. And everybody goes at it their own way. And then it's with that shared joy that you discover new ways to appreciate the game and look at the game. And it's just amazing. And then someone who like plays it with a ranged weapon or a melee weapon gets a whole different experience. Someone who plays it with a male character and a female character, you get all these different armors and different experiences. It's just, I, I can never get enough of this. So anyways, let's go finish high rank because I am 24 something monsters from my pledge. It's a heck of a lot. There's a heck of a lot of monsters to find and G rank I'm coming for you. I'll see you on the next stream or the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Usually I like to start these videos with a bit of trauma from the last week, but honestly, I kind of killed so many things last week. It was easy sailing. No trauma here. hunts. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to a Monster Hunter journal where I journey through Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, trying to fight and kill every monster. Last time we talked, I had 24 less left on the list. Today there's 19. Your boy HJ has been quite busy. <laughs> So this past week, I killed a bunch of Durham Boros. I don't know why. I thought I was one quest away from unlocking the nine star high rank, but, and I, I, I wasn't. Cause I killed two Durham Boros thinking that was the key quest. Nothing happened. So then I went for the one Durham Boros and nothing happened. And this is what I get for AK guessing. People are like, just look up the key quest. I'm like, I could look up the key quest. That would be in more efficient time. Or I can try to guess it and have fun killing things along the way. And then there was the laggy quest and I was not looking forward to fighting a full high rank laggy because that thing scarred me. It's the only thing that made me fail a quest on my entire journey of 3U. Laggy is the thing that killed me. And so to go back, I was like, oh, even though I got my nice switch axe, I don't want to like jinx it and kill the laggy or fight the laggy because he's, he's going to kill me. I went into it with so much fear in my heart and it went so smooth. We were on the deserted aisles, so the water was clean, and I was just cracking his legs, cracking his face, cracking his back, cracking his tail. Actually, the tail came off, but it was easy. Like, he was on land quite a bit, and I was just like, smack, 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 and he died. Um, I think within 10, 15 minutes. Like, everything I hunted was dying within at least 15 minutes. Um, maybe at most, I meant at most 15 minutes. It, it was just pretty smooth. So I finally uh, unlock nine or the urgent rank first, the urgent quest, which is, is an ogre. And I was like, oh, <gasps> no, I don't think I'm ready for Zenogre. I still have trauma from this boy destroying me in Rise. He was scary in World. What's it going to be like in 3U? Is he still going to be the same speed? Because I certainly am not the same speed as Rise or 3U and uh or rise and world and i have to say he moves fast i was expecting them to dial him back a bit or have i was expecting him to be slower because we are in the old world here but man he was moving fast and doing his disco stuff and i was like it's it's the same beast it's the same Zenogre. they just they never changed him through generations and he was just like disco throwing throwing his body on me and I, I was getting tossed around i don't know how i survived it i got a little smarter i think just like being a little bit more uh dodging him 
but I was stressed. That thing comes at you fast, it's aggressive, but it's got that awesome music. I still love that his theme song's there. I think I prefer the theme song in the newer games. I think it just has more of an oomph to it. Um, this one, like, you know, there was the key part, the dun, 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 but I didn't, like, it didn't hit me as much as in World or Rise. Um, so I'm not sure why. But the fight was fun. It was the first time I actually got to remove um, the bug off his back. So when he fell, I had my net out. And I was like, shoop, and I got it. I don't know what I can do with it, but that's cool. Because I had always heard since World that you can pick the bugs off his back. Um, but this is the first time I actually did it. So oh, Zenogra nice. fell. That, that felt like a huge victory. And then we unlocked Nine Star. We are at the final slice of high rank finally. I'm so excited to be here. Um, and I had three new monsters ahead of me. I had a Sand Baryoth, which I was like, no, thank you. Um, an Azor Rathlos, which also I was like, Whoa. and then an Argyukyuga, which I did not know was in this game. So that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, so we went for Sand Baryoth because I did a poll and that's what chat voted for. And I'm glad they did because I really don't like Sand Baryoth. He's just terrible. Like whether it's Baryoth or Sand Baryoth, I don't like it. And I can tell you exactly why. So Sam Baryoth exists and I will run to him and I'm about to swing and then he exists over there. And then I go over there and then he exists over there. And it's just like, and finally I like get close to him and he just like tornadoes me or kicks me. And it's always, I get close, he runs away or I get close, he smacks me. Never really much in between. So it's just a really tedious fight. And then sometimes I finally get into him and then through him comes a stupid little monster that wants to be like noticed. He's like, notice me senpai and um, headbutts you. And that's the most frustrating. So Sam Baryoth is even uglier than his like ice variant or version of himself. Um, and then he does these cool like tornadoes that he like actually jumps into and spins. I have to say that is quite cute and quite cool. Uh, but he's still a frustrating fight, and I really don't enjoy the Sam Baryoth, or any Baryoths. In 3U, I don't remember hating him that much in World, so I don't know if they've like changed him or what, but man, in 3U, I just don't like him. Then I went to Azur Rathalos, which was another one that I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad, because Azur Rathalos is a pain in World. I absolutely hate this thing, because it's, it's like a Rathalos, but it's always in the air, so I'm like, oh, this is going to be terrible. So he spawned in the nest. I'm like, I got this. I'm just going to hold his egg. And then he's he's going to have to fight me in his nest all the time, just like the Rathian and the Rathalos. Man, this boy is a bad father. Azra Rathalos couldn't give two cents about his eggs. I held that egg for like a minute, staring at the sky like, huh? Huh? You, you're going to come and fight me? Nope. He doesn't care. Probably not his kid. So we had to actually track him down and chase him around. And I, halfway into the fight, I learned Devil Joe's on this map to make things better. And I didn't have any poo on me. So I what had to somehow like hit Azerathalos no. while avoiding Devil Joe. Oh my goodness. Poo. How did I survive this night? As I'm reflecting, I was like, I, I was put in a lot of difficult positions. But I made it through. Somehow I got a lot of hits on Azerathalos. He wasn't that ridiculous. The hardest part of that fight was managing Devil Joe with Azerathalos. But Azerathalos was fine. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the fight. It was like just a normal Rathalos, but he looked cooler because he's blue and blue is better than red. Um, then I went into Nargakuga and this fight, I wasn't sure what to expect because in World, Nargakuga didn't leave an impression. In Rise, he didn't really leave much of an impression either. But man, in this one, he's he's fast. Like he's he felt as fast as an ogre. I was like, oh man, what's with all these fast beasts now that we're getting close to endgame? Um, but otherwise, first attempt, I kind of knew his move sets. He got me quite a few times with his tail. But once I remembered that, oh yeah, his tail is long and hits you <laughs> a lot if you're not careful. Um, I managed to get around that and knocked him out. So bam, four monsters down, 20 left. Um, and then I, I was like, okay, what can I do to like knock out maybe a, a nice easy one before the end of the night? Or no, it was my, my switch axe was killing everything so fast. I was like, oh, what else do we have in the... Um, on the list that I could knock out quick. And I was like, oh, that's Cetus from low rank. Let's go pay him a visit and knock him out quick. I spent 30 minutes wailing on that whale. Ah, I always forget about that joke, but it's a good one still. And I was just like axing, axing, like just smacking him over and over. And I actually did not slay him in the 30 minute window. With my slime axe, I got his beard off. I got his, I broke everything on this whale. 
and he did not die. I Dragonated him once. I think I missed him another time. So I went back a second time and I had to fight a whole other seven minutes. I was just like, how much HP does this thing have? This is ridiculous. And I finally killed Cetus. So that one wasn't like anything great. I mean, I'm, I'm literally beating an old whale in low rank, but it's part of the pledge and I had to finish it. So that brought us to five. With all that said, I have my eyesight on the next kind of, um, I guess the next big barrier, which is going to be an ivory laggy. And I don't know if it's a lot harder, but the chat seemed to be going like, ooh, ooh, so I think that's going to be a scary one. I've also unlocked a few new variants for next week. So I've got Glacial Agnactor, Black Diablos, Steel Uragon. So I've got those four and the Devil Joe that's still on the menu. Um, that's five coming up for tonight when this video releases. And uh, if I manage to go through all this, we will be down to 14 monsters. So we're in the like, let's just clear through the high rank list because man, it felt like I was in the mid 20s for the longest time. But now we're making the subtraction, making the pledge move forward. And uh, let's see, these five, I don't know if this is going to take me to the end of high rank or if there's still a lot more. I could be. But I feel that I will see the end of high rank, if not this stream, next stream. It's got to happen soon. We got to be close to the end of this high rank. So I'll see you either on the stream or on the next journal. And until next time, keep it classy. Well, a classy crew, I finished high rank in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. If we don't count the pickle, because after all, is it really a monster? It's more like part of the scene more than anything. <laughs> Pidgey hunts. <laughs> Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another Monster Hunter journal as I journey through Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, seeking to kill all the monsters. Last time I left you, there were 19. Now there are 15. We are, and I've rolled now credits on high rank, which means I am technically, I think, two thirds of the way through this game. Now we just got to get through its Iceborne version of it and, uh,. We will be done with this generation. So I really look forward to seeing what the, the remainder of these monsters are because um, so here's what I killed this past week and then I'm going to speculate a little bit on what's left. So there were a lot of subspecies, I think we call them. Um, we had Black Diablos, Steel Uragon, Glacial Agnector, Ivory Laggy. They have all died. They have all been hunted and their tails are now on my tail wall. Uh, so that brings us to 15. And out of those 15, I know I still have to kill uh, Jen Moran and Devil Joe. So that takes me down to 13 monsters. There are 13 monsters in this game, and I don't know what they are. I know Alatreon's in this game, and I know there's that other black dragon that's in the intro cutscene. And I can't, I'm not going to start speculating on what all the other monsters are because that could take a while. Um, but there's a good dozen that I just don't know what they are. So I'm excited to meet some new friends. So let's get started. In typical Hey J foolery, I, got, I was really hyped and excited for the stream. And I jumped into the Black Diablos quest without eating. No. No, I, dump, I jumped into the Black Diablos quest without any cool drinks, or maybe it was hot drinks. I forget what time of day it was. So I walked in there. I was like, oh, I, I cannot do this. I'm not going to do this without my drink. So I abandoned the quest. And then I was all like, oh, man, that's embarrassing, right, chat? Ha, ha, that's bad. And then I go back in the quest and I forget to eat. And I'm just like, oh, my oh. God, what is wrong with me? So I think I forgot to stock up on my items as well as forgetting to eat. It was... It was just embarrassing. And so the Black Diablos was, I was like, oh, whatever. We'll just make the best of it. So I didn't have any skill. And I went after this thing and my goodness, this thing is aggressive. Like it is so fast. It's just like, I'm in the ground. I'm out the ground. I'm in your face, I'm in your back. I'm on all your faces. It just it slaps so hard and not like in a good way. So, um, I'm just like, let's just, let's just do my best shot. I'll dodge what I can and I'll swing at what I can. And for 30 minutes, I was just going through all my potion supplies. I think I was getting to the point where, yeah, the supplies came back. I went to the box to loot the supplies. Like I literally used everything the game gave me without proper, <clears throat> without properly preparing. 
And uh, around that time, the tail flew off, the horn flew off. I was like, oh my God, am I actually going to break this thing? And it started limping and I was like, oh, and it went to sleep. And I had tranquilizer bombs, but I didn't have traps. I was like, oh, why am I such an unprepared hunter? This could be done right now. But no, I got to be in a stressful position instead. So I booped it on the snoot and I slashed it a few more times and it died. I was like, man, that was a very close fight. I guess I, I do it for the theatrics, but they're accidental theatrics. I do not plan for these things to happen. So with Black Diablos out of the way, I went after the Steel Oregon, which I have to say, I don't know why this creature exists. It doesn't really do anything different than Oregon. It looks better than Oregon. If anything, I would say get rid of Oregon, keep Steel Oregon, and give me some armor that shimmers the way Steel Oregon's skin shimmers. I think the main difference between these two is he farts more. So it's the first time I used deodorant. Let's not quote that out of context because I know editor will. But yeah, I was dropping deodorant everywhere because I, I just kept falling in this guy's fart cloud. It was really unpleasant. Um, but for the most part, it was swing, swing, and kill, which is kind of a problem with 3 Ultimate. I'm going to throw some criticism um, in 3 Ultimate's direction soon. Then we went to Glacial, Agnactor, and I love Agnactor. And for some reason, you know, I'm more of an ice guy. See my sweetheart, Valkana. Um, so I did like the Glacial Agnactor design better. What I didn't like is how much he messed with my stamina. Now, to be fair, I could enjoy this fight a lot more simply by building an armor set that gives me like ice resist and uh, all the things that doesn't hurt my stamina. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it was just fun. And uh, since I used the sword on my switch axe, I could get through his his ice chunks. But otherwise, if I tried to use my axe, I was just so I could imagine if you don't have mind's eye on your weapon, it could be a huge pain to fight him. Uh, otherwise, he's cool. If you know and this all unlocked, finally, the Ivory Laggy, which I did not realize was the fight before the end credits. I I don't know what I thought the end credit, like the fight for the end credits would be. But this was really anticlimactic. More criticism. I'm going to throw some criticism on this game. So the Ivory Laggy was built up as this big, like, terror of the sea. And I was really fearful of the original Laggy. It also is the only monster that made me completely fail a quest on my journey so far. So to face an ivory laggy, I was like, oh my goodness, what could it possibly be? How terrifying could it be? And they're like, it's the master of the land and the sea. Like they really built up a legend. So I go on the deserted island and I go right to the water. I was like, all right, where are you, ivory laggy? He's nowhere in the water. I was like, what? So then I go back into the caves and there he is on land. He's like, what's up, bro? And so I start pounding on this thing and it was a way more fun fight than um, laggy and this is purely because I improved as a hunter and my skill was a lot better um, but for the most part 90% of the fight was on land which is what made it easier because I struggle with laggy underwater and I don't know why he didn't go underwater so it made the fight a lot more fun because as much as I like to say yeah water fight has a place in monster hunter um, it's still more fun to fight monsters on land and I was so on top of everything we got him into his cave where he was uh, he wasn't asleep but he ran back to his cave and I was like, all right, I'm going to style in this guy and we're going to finish him off with a nice like invasion sensation in the face or something. And this is where I got taught a lesson in humility, which I never actually learned. So it was more like it was presented to me, but I'm not sure I absorbed it. And I carded. I carded because I even called it. I was like, watch, this is going to make me cart, but I'm going to style on this guy. And I just went for it and he sent me back to base. And then I went back and I had to finish him off underwater, which stressed me because then he was really like starting to turn the tide around me. All these puns. Um, but I, I ended up killing him. And then we got credits. I was like, oh, that's the end of hiring. That's technically the end of the story. Wow. What was the story? <laughs> there, this game really like has no story. They all built it up after like the story transformed, but in a really disconnected way. At first it's like, save our village, stop the earthquakes replenish the mask of these kids and i'm like what and then the it's it's just so weird uh and the credits had this like fantastic music and it unlocked another like credit scene for some reason about the kids just like doing their antics and that like really epic music playing like chanting and i'm just so confused i was like none of this is really fulfilling from a story point like it's not like monster Hunter world where you're like uh, oh, we, we saved everybody and we're all like celebrating and there's this like amazing music happening. It's not even like Rise, which as much as we like to throw shade at Rise, that credit 
scroll like it felt like you okay i saved the village and now the maiden's singing like it that's that's climactic that's good here there the singing was disconnected from like the visuals we're seeing and it was just like yeah the the end of this like errant hunter which isn't epic or anything he just defended his village is over and i'm just like ah oh, i i feel like it could have been more um so the other criticism i want to throw at the game is you've no you'll probably notice that i've been going through the last few monsters fairly easily and it's because there's a pattern to it because the game has more limited mechanics you can say the design of the fight is more intentional but the downside is once you figure out the pattern of how to fight a monster in three ultimate with your weapon it's rinse and repeat you find the blind spot in my case i find the blind spot i pull out my sword whoosh whoosh dodge whoosh whoosh dodge go back to the blind spot and it's just step and repeat uh, you don't have as much room for styling. There's not as much room for maneuverability like in World or Rise where they've really like fleshed out the uh, the weapon set and what you can do with it. And so I feel like every new target that was provided, it was cool to see it move. But ultimately, after five minutes, I'm just like, okay, here are the openings. Here is where it attacks. I just have to be here and I just have to do my, my three move uh, combo on repeat. And to some extent, that got a little... Um, stale if anything it's the fights where i went in unprepared that were a lot more chaotic and kind of fun in some ways because i didn't know how it was going to go and i was playing with a handicap essentially so yeah I, i'm just gonna say like i do like the intentional design of the combat in 3u but uh, and maybe it's because i'm using the slime axe i don't know i don't think so because it was starting to do this before i got the slime axe anyways um it's just there's less moves to do and so your experiences can only be so diverse now, with the remaining monsters, uh, Devil Joe terrifies me. I haven't actually tried hunting him once yet. So this is probably a monster that will break my pattern and that I will have to learn how to play on a whole different level. Um, he, he really terrifies me. I expect to cart a lot to this thing. And I heard that there is a monster that unlocks after you complete all the village quests. And I may have heard which monster this is. It's a certain black dragon that is my friend. Uh, if this is the case, and there is a high rank Alatreon, I'm going to attempt to unlock him so I can fight him. Um, but otherwise, uh, G rank lays ahead, and I have a lot of new monsters to hunt down and discover. So multiplayer is going to be open as we kind of open and unlock things so that I can go after the G rank monsters. I will attempt them solo. And if for whatever reason, I've, I eventually deem them impossible solo, but I already don't know it's possible because other people have done it. Um, so I will be attempting the final few monsters solo in G rank, uh, which is not advised, but we will see how far I get. So join me for that next journal or for the next stream whenever, uh, wherever you may find me. And until next time, keep it classy. You never forget your first devil, Joe, or your second one. Actually, it doesn't matter what you <laughs> Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another Monster Hunter journal where I go through Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and try to kill everything single-handedly as I journal my, my journey here on YouTube. I've already done Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, and Rise if you want to check those out, and now we're doing 3 Ultimate. And now I've just finished hunting the Devil Joe, the monster that has actually scared me in 3 Ultimate, and I've been avoiding him by throwing all the poo I could at him, just saying, please stay away. As I reflected on... And I have to say, this fight was great. It was, I think as a hunter, I need to be a little bit scared for the fight to be good. It's not good to be overconfident and just slash your way through monsters. That's not what this game's about. You want to feel a little bit of fear. You want to be uncomfortable. And not uncomfortable because you didn't prepare properly, but uncomfortable because you did prepare and you're still having troubles. That's when you know things are getting serious. And so I, after uh, 60 hours... The Devil Joe and I finally had our date of going one-on-one -on -one and seeing what it was all about. So the first thing, I'm going to share with you my 3U experience and then how that com compared to my world experience. Uh, going into this fight, you know, it's in the volcano. Um, I was going at it really like, okay, we're going to study this guy first. We're going to see what he's doing. All right, he's swinging his tail. And I quickly learned the worst part about Devil Joe is his massive chunky tail. That thing, he whips around like crazy. And if he's not whipping it on purpose, it wiggles all the time. And if you get smacked by that, there goes your health. So learning that how he how he like bites a few times and then the tail is wiggling. And then sometimes he just does a tail whip and hits you with that. 
but I, I discovered pretty quickly that there's a nice safe point, which is right underneath the tail, um, because he's so high off the ground that usually if you stand right like under his, his, his well, it's his bum hole basically, uh, you're not going to get hit from most attacks. So that was number one. We found the safe spot. Uh, the next thing I had to deal with is his drool, which I didn't realize. I thought, so most monsters, when they drool, it's a good sign. I was like, oh, look at him. He's tired. But then I'm like, what is this buff I have? I thought I was getting buffed by the kids the whole time. Until the chat's like, that's not a buff. You're, you've got some pickle acid on you that is debuffing your defense. I was like, oh, he's drooling on me intentionally to make me weaker. Um, so maybe that's why I was taking a little bit more damage than I was expecting. But for the most part, I managed okay. Uh, I did get a cart. Um, he was even more terrifying when he was getting all red and bulgy. Uh, so he was a lot more aggressive. That mo That's mostly it. Just a lot more aggressive, which made him a lot harder to deal with. Uh, but for the most part, I had fun with him. I broke his face. Uh, apparently, you can break it twice. I think I broke it once. When the tail came off, that's when it was like, great. But then I learned he can eat his tail. I was like, like no, get away from the tail. That's that's mine. Because um, I think I carded soon after I broke his tail off. Or I went back to camp or something. And so I was afraid that his tail was not going to be there because he was going to snack on it. Because this boy snacks on everything. But luckily, it was there. Uh, and then it was just a matter of uh, closing it, but it was it was never really comfortable. Like I, I threw some criticism at this game last week about, oh, once you find the weak point, you just swoosh, swoosh and swoosh your way to victory, especially with the slime axe. Not true here. I found the safe point, but Devil Jill moves so much, so aggressive that it's not that easy to just stand there and do swoosh, swoosh. You have to really dance a lot more and uh, uh I enjoyed the challenge. It was the right level of discomfort to make it a nice, memorable fight. Now, when we compare this to World, where I had zero experience and no real understanding of the world, Devil Joe was just spoken as a myth. I knew that there was a pickle coming up. Actually, everybody referred to him as, as the pickle. And remember, I have no context for Monster Hunter at all at, at this point. Uh, so I don't know what is what fits within the realm of possibility. So in my mind, I was envisioning the original original devil joe before seeing him i thought he was going to be like a very small pickle that you think is like this small object that ends up being like this horrendous monster that chases you super fast and just destroys you so as people were taunting me in world about you're gonna meet the pickle soon i was so ready that like i would mistaken something in the environment to be a plant and then that would end up being a monster kind of like a cactuar size uh, and so I was quite surprised when I found out it's actually a massive Godzilla-like monster. Uh, and I think the first time I saw him in World, he was stalking like, uh, he was invading a map, but I saw him like through the trees and I was like, what the heck is that? That thing is huge. Um, so I, I didn't have as much fear with the Devil Joe in World for some reason. Like despite being like, oh my God, I'm scared. Um, I was getting to the point where I was getting more confidence into the, the game. And in fact, uh, I think it was uh, Gaijin, Gaijin Hunter gave me like a bet of like, oh, I bet if you if you manage to kill your first Devil Joe on your first trial, I'll give you a trophy. And with that, I, I got like a, a boost of confidence and I just went for it. I was like, let's just see what it is. Not understanding really the world, the game, the monster myself. And I did pretty okay. And somehow, I don't know how I beat him, but I beat him a lot easier in world than in uh, 3 Ultimate. And uh, everybody was surprised. I was surprised. I got my trophy and it was a big memorable moment because of the community aspect of Monster Hunter. And I have to say that is really what I enjoy so much about this game is that whole community aspect, how we all have an experience, how we can all share it and how on stream I get to experience this game in a way that I wouldn't if I was playing it off stream. So when it comes down to Devil Joe's, yeah, I, I, I loved my three ultimate experience and I almost wish I could have experienced that to appreciate his return in world. But now if we get a monster under six or if he comes back in, in Sunbreak, uh, it's a great way to see, you know, to, to get that feeling of like, oh, an old threat is coming back, which would be pretty cool. Um, to be fair, I don't think I see Devil Joe working in Sunbreak simply because you as the hunter are too fast and maneuverable. and going up against like a massive devil joe which is like slow and powerful i think it would it's just not a good matchup you would be able to slice and dice this thing so easily it just wouldn't be as terrifying uh, otherwise uh the rest of the stream was mostly a grind so um i am trying to unlock the alatreon quest but i have like 21 quest villages left to do i think i have one left in low rank 
I'm like 20 in high rank, so I have quite the grind to do. I'm probably going to try to knock some of those out uh, offline when uh, my schedule is going to open up in a few weeks and I'll be able to knock out more stuff offline. So we'll clear that out so I can do Alatran on, on stream. Uh, the rest was grinding out the, the hub quests. So I was at three star or four star, one of the two. And so we did a lot of multiplayer just grinding out key quests to get uh, to get ahead and in between every key quest i was also fighting a bracadios trying to get the gem no gems no gems and most of our of the hunting party didn't get any gems so i think we we must have hunted like several bracadios that night no gems i've hunted uh close to 20 uh, somewhere between 12 and 20 bracadios like in my playthrough still no gems so can't upgrade my switch axe until that gem drops so the grind continues unfortunately uh, uh, another very concerning thing with my, uh, my, my journey here is my Wii U froze three times oh, no. on the last stream, which it has never done so far. So I don't know if it's a sign that my Wii U is coming to the end of its life or if it's going to die, uh, but three times in four hours is extremely concerning. And I really hope that this Wii U holds on so that I can finish because like, we're almost there. And after this, I don't know if I'm going to need to play it, a Wii U or anything. But man, this Wii U needs to hold on. Now, to be fair, people, I, apparently I should be cleaning it. I haven't cleaned it in like 10 years. So I'll, I'll give it a clean and hopefully it sticks together. Maybe it was just hot because it was it was a warm day when I was playing it. But it doesn't make sense. I would um, overheat three times like that. Um, so that's my biggest nemesis right now. The Wii U, please stay alive. Uh, and then finally, uh, after all that grinding, I've unlocked the emergency quest for a gold Cetus, Cetus. I have, or a gold beard Cetus. I have no idea why they made a variant of this. He's a big, slow whale. And I can't imagine what a variant would do other than be more shiny. Like, I feel like this is going to be like the Steel Oregon again, where it's like, oh, he looks cooler, but, and he farts a little bit more, but what is he going to do? Like, what more can you do with a Cideus? A Cideus? Um, is he going to swim a little bit faster? Is he going to have, like, one more move? Which would be what? Because he already slaps you with the tail and rams you with the horns. Like, what else can this guy do? Tickle you with his beard? Uh, so after the gold Cideus, I think we are entering new territory of, hub, of new monsters in Hub, which I will be taking on solo. So this week will probably be a little bit punishing. Um, but looking forward to making some more progress on this pledge. We're going to be in single digits uh, before you know it. And I have a, a deadline now because we have Sunbreak, which is coming out in a couple months. And I want to get this adventure wrapped up before Sunbreak. If I don't, it's okay. I mean, I'm okay to delay my Sunbreak adventure a few weeks. Uh, but for the, for the world to come together nice, it'd be nice if 3 Ultimate Pledge was done before that, that drop date of Sunbreak. So I'll see you on stream or on the next video. And until next time, Classy Crew, keep it classy. Hunter friends, never taunt a monster or fate because it will punish you hard. Pidgey hunts. What the heck? Come on. Oh, this is going to suck. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another Monster Hunter Journal as we get into the end game of the pledge to defeat all monsters into Monster Hunter Ultimate 3 Ultimate. Oh my goodness, I can't speak. Uh, we are now down to 13. I spent a whole stream fighting a golden whale, which I was like last uh, last year. I was like, he here, how, how hard can this be? I mean, he was so easy the first time. He's mostly just a massive pool of HP I have to go through. What are they going to do with a bling bling whale? Oh, the bling bling hits hard. The bling bling has scarred me. And I was actually quite fearful of like, I was getting the Iceborne vibes again, which is great and not great because it's, it's been a year since I let, no, it's been half a year since I left Iceborne. And I kind of forgot what my Monster Hunter World grind was compared to my Iceborne grind. Like the Iceborne endgame is a whole different type of game compared to like your usual world grind. And the same thing seems to be happening here as I dip my toe into G rank where the game progress has been pretty comfortable and, and good so far. And fighting the golden, the gold Cideus just knocked some sense into me of like, oh, oh. Oh, this is how this is how much harder this game can be. And this is just the entry point, which means it's only going to get worse from here. I had 13 monsters left to hunt. 
and I'm just, I'm just a little bit worried. So on the last stream, uh, I'm trying to really get this Bracadios gem. It's been two weeks of me and fellow hunters hunting these uh, Bracadios, trying to get the gem so I can upgrade my sword. And I really wanted that before the Golden Sedeus because when I fought the normal Sedeus, it took me 30 minutes to kill it with my current sword. And I was just like, this is this is terrible. Like, if the Golden Sedeus is anything, um, uh, an indication that it's a harder Sedeus, I need to do more damage. Otherwise, uh, even if I can dodge everything, I'm just going to run out of time. So after about an hour, um, I still couldn't get a freaking Bracadillo's gem. Uh, we just, we, we tried. Everybody else was getting a gem, but not me. No gem for AJ. I am, I am gemless. Uh, so I'm like, whatever, let's just go at it. So I went in there in full Volvidon armor, silly me, uh, because Volvidon armor is actually weak to water. And guess what? You're surrounded by water and you're getting blasted by a water cannon from a massive water creature. So not so smart on my part. Um, 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 I got in there and I was being outmaneuvered like crazy. This golden Sedeus moves way faster than the other one. And it's, it's in the same environment. Remember when I said, what more can they do with a fish? Well, they can make them faster and they can give them a supernova beam that kills you no matter what you do. So uh, fear definitely crept in after that encounter. I was like, oh no, what can I do now? So I was like, all right, I got to get rid of this armor. But then I'm like, oh, do I really want to spend another 20 hours just to grind an armor just to fight this thing? The... Um, that didn't sound so appealing at that at that time. So I was like, all right, let's see what we can build. I fought all sorts of things. Maybe I can like grab some armor of this and like scavenge something. So I started taking apart my armor. I built like, I'm like, oh, I hunted a lot of Durham Boros and that's res um, uh, resilient or has a good defense against water somehow. So I was like, all right, let's put a piece of Durham Boros here. Do I have any uh, uh, laggy pieces? Cause I got a bunch of gems there. Oh, I can make some like legs, some shin legs. I'm like, all right, let's put some laggy stuff here. And just like, boom, boom, boom. By the end, I look like a clown, but I was like, I don't care. I, un I know that in this game, mixing armor sets is not advised, but between some, some talismans, some decorations and some desperations, I managed to pull something that was kind of decent, honestly. I've I think there are worse sets out there. And so that gave me a little bit more defense. And then I went in at it again and I did much better that time, but I was still like, oh man, this defense, this armor is not working so well. Like I'm, I'm still getting, uh, a lot of my health is getting hit when I'm getting hit. And I was like, oh, whatever. So I kept wailing on it. I love saying that. And I dragonated it a few times. So I'm like, okay, things are going no. well, but I just couldn't keep up um, with the, the, with its onslaught. Uh, I also realized my underwater skill is not good enough. One of the things I learned is he will do like either a vertical jet blast or a horizontal jet blast. And that is to teach you, to teach us fellow hunters, if you know how to swim up and right and left. It turns out I did not know how to swim up and down on command, only left and right. And so I was so glad that someone taught me, they're like, oh, you have to hit B and then you um, then you hit your left joystick and I'll shoot you up or down. So understanding that allowed me to add more dodging mechanisms into my gameplay, which honestly went a long way to keeping me alive. Anyways, I died. So I was like, oh man, like, oh, what can I do? I, I guess, should we actually uh, level up the Bracadillo? Should I spend that? And then somebody on chat was like, hey Jay, did you even level up your armor? Like all this new armor I made, did you bother to level it up? I was like, oh, I totally forgot to level up my armor. So that whole time I was fighting the gold Sedeus with under leveled armor. So I was like, so we went back into the pond, played with the whale and this time I killed it. It wasn't as easy as, as, as saying jumping into the pond and killing it. Um, I think I was stretched so thin that I had to far caster at one point, sleep in the bed. I went through all of my potions. Um, it was, it was getting to that level of desperation where I didn't think it was going to happen. And then out of nowhere, it died. And I was like, oh, it's over. Like I was already getting myself set for, I'm going to have to fight this thing until next stream. I'm going to have to fight this thing over and over. I'm going to have to somehow get good at fighting underwater. And all these things were getting, were just sounding so terrible to me. So with that, uh, that was a major step forward, opening up G rank. And now there are, like I said, 13 monsters. I still have 20 quests in village to grind out to unlock our, our boy Alatra. And I'm actually gonna make some notes here. Oh, I discovered my first new monster in G rank. I haven't seen it. I just saw it on the quest list. We have green Plesioth. 
uh, on the menu. So that's something I have to look forward to. So we are going to potentially knock out something else, assuming I can actually kill this green Plesioth. I need to grind out some armor. So I did fight a quest with... Um, Oh, actually, it wasn't even a good quest because it was one where you fight two great jaggies, I think they're called, and two Volvidons, but they don't drop any armor. They drop the Mega Potions, so it's not that great of a grinding quest, I think, because um, I want to build my G-rank Volvidon armor or my G-rank uh, great jaggy armor so I can, like, whoop, let's, let's be less squishy. So that leaves me with nine monsters. I don't know. I have no idea what other nine monsters are in this game. Um, I, I assume that there's going to be some variants or subspecies of some of the ones I've fought already, but I don't know what they are. So nine mystery monsters remain. Um, Thirteen remain to be hunted until this pledge is complete. And we now have, so we're almost into April, April, May. Three months remain if I can do this before Sunbreak comes out until our next adventure calls us to new lands to hunt other new monsters. So that's where we are. Not not too much to share, but the golden the golden um, Sidious was was a humbling experience, and my ego I will set it aside a little bit now as I enter into G rank because it's very punishing. So I'll see you on the next stream as I take on the green Plesioth, Plesioth, and until next time, keep it classy. I made the mistake of laughing off Plesioth because my first fight with it was so easy. Green Plesioth. Welcome back, Classy Crew. I'm back from my grind of the Brachdios and the, the the terror that is the green Plesioth. I'm sorry I've been away for a while, but the I've I hit a wall. I hit a 3U wall. This G rank is is no funny business. My armor's weak, my axe is weak, and my green Plesioth makes me weak in the knees. So let me tell you, but I did finally kill green Plesioth. It just happened that I needed a lot more grind time and patience but basically green plus yacht is kind of my new diablos but i promise you i won't make a parody song about it so what i've been doing the past few weeks is killing golden cetus cetus yeah cetus to get his armor set to get my first g rank armor set and i've also been killing bracadios over bracadios over bracadios for the past month trying to get a freaking gem and you know what i finally got two gems after I think I've killed 30 Bracadios. Anyways, it took me a month and I, I finally got my two gems, <laughs> which let me finally upgrade my switch axe into something a little bit more decent. I forget which one it is, but it's the one where you need the, the Bracadios gem. And then after that, uh, all I needed was some, some all fire stones to get me the demolition axe, which is the second best axe in the Bracadios tree. I only have one more upgrade to do and my axe will be maxed out and I will have achieved max dps of the weapon then then it's on me the player to make my dps go up as for the golden status grind that one is a little bit less um urgent to me because i i've killed quite a few golden status thank you to all the viewers who have been grinding with me but uh i need to get gems from this boy too i need two gems and i got no gems from him and i need some fur i think and i don't have enough fur from him either i did manage to craft three pieces of his out uh, of his armor and then I also managed to, and I was just like, well, the other two pieces are going to take forever. So I just went and got a great Jaggy, the helm, and I got the, the waistband or something. So I'm fully decked out in G-rank armor now. And the last stream, I don't know, there was just something where I was like, we're not going to hunt hard today. We're just going to prepare hard, <laughs> if that makes sense. And it was a very satisfying stream where there was just so much to do where especially I, I had upgraded my axe and i'm like all right let's go scavenge and get some stones all right what parts do i need to like make this armor set work okay let's start grinding stuff out and i went and talked to an old lady and she was selling some mm, defense stones or armor stones and everybody's like buy those luckily i had a lot of money so i bought like 200 of them turns out i learned that the armor stones let me craft the spheres which let me ar upgrade my armor so I just, I crafted all of the spheres I could, the, the ultimate true spheres, the hard spheres, and I maxed out my armor, spent all my money, and I boosted my defense up to 100. I think I'm at like 608 defense, which is pretty up there as far as defense goes for this game. Uh, I also realized the my honey yield was a little low. And then I realized all of my quests, my village quests, I've never been, not my village quests, my requests have not really been 
taken care of. So I took some time. I was like, all right, I need some busy bees to get my honey production up. And then I just like knocked out a bunch of farm requirements. I upgraded my shroom box, my honey box, my insect box. All my boxes have been grown. Another thing is I unlocked a mask and I, I've shared it before. I really like the kid's mask and how there's a new mask added in the room as you unlock them. I have made the executive decision that we shall no longer count. I really want to count these masks. So we will no longer count the complete armor stuff because I'm nearing on my 100 hour mark and I think I've completed three armor sets. So that counter is pretty much useless at this point. So next stream, I'm going to swap it out and we're going to count down all the masks. I'm going to try to collect all the masks in this game. That sounds way more interesting than than whatever I was doing. So with all of that going on, I was like, all right, what other like little thing can we do? What can we do besides fight Green Plessio? Because the first time I fought him was before all of this grinding with my old axe and my old armor. And he wiped the floor with me. He was like fast in the water and then he went on land. And when I fought the base Plessio, I was like, that's where I destroyed him. So when Green Plessio went there, I'm like, oh, you're in my neighborhood now. And he's like, nope, hip check, hip check. Oh, I got so much tail smacks i was getting quite aggravated by this thing so he sent me into uh, a little bit of a what do you call that ptsd something i just didn't want to fight him again so i'm like what else can i fight that can like make this a productive night and move the pledge forward and so jen moran was a high rank monster i had not soloed yet so i was like all right now that i've got my new axe let's go and practice on the big whale and it was very enlightening because i had never taken him on solo and there was parts to this fight I didn't quite know because other people were doing it. So I, I recommend everybody solo Gemron at least once so you can really understand every aspect of the fight and that'll just make you play better when you're doing it in multiplayer. My biggest concern was not my health, uh, it was really my DPS. I was worried I would run out of time and so or actually I was also afraid that my ship would get destroyed. So I made it to phase two and this big whale's like coming up at me. I dragonated him and then I'm like smacking his toes, but he is just wailing on my boat. And I was just like, he's going to destroy the ship before I can kill him. And I'm just like smacking on the toes, hoping he can die. And then he eventually died. And I was like, yes, we can take one off the counter. And so we went down to 12. And then after that, I was pretty much out of options. I had uh, switched out played around with my armor to get the best I could with what I had and I had gone my farm all the way up and so the last thing that I had was either green Plesioth, Kurupeko, or uh, Pink Rathian. These are the three quests that I have on my list to progress into the next G rank level and so I put it up to the chat and of course chat hates me and they all put it on green Plesioth. I'm like screw you chat I'm gonna kill this thing. So uh, a few smacks later, um, I, I carded once and it was this, this fish, he has comedic timing. He always carts me after I taunt him. So I stopped, I dialed down the taunting. I learned that I could fish him with the toad. So I did that to get some free hits on him. I came in with a lot more traps than I usually do. Uh, thanks to some tip from a viewer who, who taught me what to carry in my bag to make more traps. And so uh, it was a very hard fight, even with everything I, I did and I eventually did slay him, but man, it was a struggle and I got slapped around hard by this thing. So I can only, I heard that 3U is the easiest Plesioth. I can only fearfully imagine what he's like in all the other games. And I'm not sure I wanna ever experience that. So with green Plesioth down, that takes us to 11 monsters remaining on my pledge list. One of which is Alatreon leaving 10 unknowns one is a dragon i have not met a black dragon and then who knows what the other nine are so that is where we are now with our old world 3u pledge it was very productive it felt really rewarding over the last few weeks as i kind of like cleared out a bunch of stuff and now it's just a matter of uh let's fight these harder versions of past monsters oh i did kill the crew peko i forgot to say uh, I did do the Kurupeko before the end of the night. Devil Joe showed up. I threw poo at him. It didn't scare him. And I was so far away. I think I was running away. And he won. Like, I had three quarters of my health. And he just dragon breathed me. And I died instantly. Oh, I was so what? shocked. I was like, what is going on here? Turns out the armor set I have is weak to dragon. It's like minus 15 to dragon. So that didn't help. So I don't really know how, how insane Devil Joe is. But that 
struck terror in me because I'm like, oh no, G rank Devil Joe is ridiculous. What are all these other like super end game monsters going to be like? So I will see you on the next stream as I take down Pink Rathian and then uh, I think I have a Baroth and a few other quests and hopefully I will unlock the next rank in my G rank quest. I also have a double Bracky quest coming up. Uh, so I'll see you then or in the next journal and until next time, keep it classy. I've just broken through Hunter Rank 7 in my Monster Hunter 3U journey, and I have some complaints about G Rank. Pidgey Hunts. Welcome back, Classic Crew, to another 3U journal, the 16th in my journey to, uh, to kill all monsters in Monster Hunter 3U. And now I've finally unlocked the next tier of quests in G Rank. We are now at Hunter Rank 7. I think after I clear the Hunter Rank 7 area, it's open waters. I go from Hunter rank 8 quest and then I'm pretty sure my Hunter rank unlocks and it'll let me grind out some last few monsters. So I have some updates from last time. I have killed one more monster, which is the Russ Durham Burroughs. Did not know that existed. I'm bringing my total pledge count to 10. There's only 10 left. Uh, five of which I am aware of. I know we have the green Narga because that's coming up next on my list. We've still got Alatron. We've still got the mysterious Black Dragon. I think that there's a variant of Gen Moraz? Moran. And I heard that there's like something, um, I think there's a, a another laggy coming up, or maybe it's something loosened that I've heard rumors of. So let me share with you a little bit of my fights, um, and then I, I have some criticism to share about the old world, specifically 3U's G rank. As a hunter that came from the new world and who has experienced master rank, and I understand I'm comparing a game that came out 10 years ago to a game that has had two, three iterations to improve on and learn and get some feedback on. So I, I don't think it's no surprise that Monster Hunter World has done a ton of improvements to its G slash master rank. But anyways, I need to complain anyways, because it's my first experience in Monster Hunter 3U and these are my fresh perspectives as a new player coming into this game. So let's start with Ruster Umbros. I was so surprised to see a variant I'm making sure, is it a variant or is it a subspecies? Oh, I can never freaking remember these. I think the subspecies is the one that adapts to its environment and therefore a Rust Durham Burrows adapted to being in the desert by being rusty? This makes no sense. So the Rust Durham Burrows was, I, I really like the base Durham Burrows. To get a new Durham Burrows that hits a little bit harder, has like one or two new moves, it was a fun fight. He didn't feel as, maybe it's because I had the experience of the first Durham Burrows, he did not feel as like uh, much of a mountain of HP. He felt more balance of, okay, I'm hacking away at you, but you're also a threat. So it was a little bit more of a dance. Wow. After that, it was a lot of fighting old monsters with now their new G rank powers. And of course I had to fight some new Giggies, which, oh, not, not Giggy, sorry, some Giggy Noxes, which I still absolutely hate them. However, I have leveled up as a hunter, and maybe at this point we should go into the pros and cons of G rank. Ready? Let's cue some music. Let's do a little pro and con. Spoilers, I only have two pros. The rest is all cons. If you look a few journals back, I was complaining that the fighting in 3U was getting very dull, especially with the switch axe, because you basically have one move that you want to do, which is the shoo 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 with the sword. You basically look for your opening and then you spam that and then you step out and then you step back in and you spam it. And it's not so um, uh, as rewarding as in the world where you're like rolling, spinning out of your, your sword into your axe. There's more, way more maneuvering and evading. In this one, you're just kind of like hop, slash, slash, hop. But when you're in G rank, the monsters are a lot more aggressive. They have more moves. And for a Switch Axe player, there's a lot more you have to watch out for. And that getting that positioning right is so much harder, which makes it your mind your mind doesn't go, wow, this is boring. I'm just choo choo choo. You're going like, holy shit, how do I stay alive? Um, so there's that. But what I really enjoy is the prep emphasis. And going back to Giginox, the first time I encountered him, I didn't know what I was doing. It was a new monster. But this boy would poison me, roar me, do all the... Suck. And his other var variant, maybe? The Baleful Giginox. Oh, it was just worse. He would just zap me and all that. So I'm like, you know what? Back in the old world Iceborne, I learned how to deal with these status ailments and these uh, monsters that give me trouble. It was called skills or decorations or whatever. So I actually started building sets to account for the monsters uh, stuff. So with the Giginox, he poisons you. And I'm like, well, I don't want to just be chugging antidotes all the time. So let's put some anti-poison decorations. Boom. We've just nullified his whole poisonous threat. 
and there was a Berioth. Okay, now let's put in some um, ice resist on there. Let's eat for thunder resist so that my stats actually have more resistance. So now I actually look at my stats. And I was like, oh, if that's a minus six uh, against like thunder, I better like eat to nullify that. So I really like that strategic aspect where now in G rank, you should be familiar with the monsters and you have access to more tools to deal with them knowing what it's going to be. And that part I absolutely love. And it gives way more depth to the game. So I love that. Now on the con side, and I'll be repeating a lot of things I've already said before, the grind, uh, the grind is really, I mean, it lives up to the reputation of grind. There there was the, a lot of hate in world against the, the guiding lands, specifically Iceborne. That is nothing, like that kind of grind is what you find here, but I feel it's even worse. Because at least in the Guiding Lands, I don't know, it's it's a mix of ecosystems, there's all sorts of surprises. Now keep in mind, I didn't go into the Guiding Lands as long as some of you did, so maybe my opinion here is not quite on the same level as yours. But I find, I, I don't, I never felt the Guiding Lands was very grindy, like a little bit, but man, the three U grind is just, it's so much more. At least when I went to the Guiding Lands, I got the parts I needed. In three U, you will be killing monster after monster and doing your little prayer and doing your little luck dance and like rubbing everything that gives you luck just so that you can get the thing only to not get the thing. And a month later, you're like, finally, I got the thing. And then after you get the thing, it just drops like crazy. Remember my whole Bracadillo story where I'm like, I need some gems, I need some gems. And for a month, I got no gems. Then I got two gems. Well, this past week, I killed two Bracadillos, the two Bracadillos quest, which we're gonna talk about. And I got two gems out of that. I'm like, okay, now it's just raining gems. Now that I don't need gems, I'm getting gems. The next thing is, what is the, in Iceborne, I, there was always this like threat that you wanted to see. Um, so after you finish the story, they're like, hey, there's, um, I think that's when there's like uh, the Alatreon quest unlocks. And I think there's all these like other quests. And all of these pieces kind of like tie into a story. And there's, there's a goal where you're like, what is that black dragon over there? that is not present in G-Rank where you're basically just taking on quests to challenge yourself. It feels a lot more arcadey. And to some, that might be great. But to me, in Monster Hunter, it's just so much cooler when you know that there's this existential threat at the end of your quest and you're grinding and you're working your way there. Right now, I'm blindly, well, not blindly, like I have a quest. My quest is I want to kill and see, I want to see and kill all monsters in this game. If I didn't have that pledge, I would just be going, well, what's at the next? Like, I'm just going to keep fighting this for more challenge and to see what's next. But there's nothing that in the game that really tells you, hey, there might be something next. Like, it doesn't even tell you. Maybe if you finish all the quests, something good will happen. That's up to the player to discover. And to some, I get that that could be something you like. I'm not saying it's ultimately bad. I'm saying for me, I would rather have a little story point, a little carrot dangling in the, in the distance where I'm like, I want to go see what's over there. The next thing I, I really noticed yesterday um, well, not yesterday, whenever, whenever, the last stream I did, uh, the difficulty between solo and multiplayer um, varies greatly. And going into this, I was terrified of doing G rank solo because everyone said it was geared to multiplayer. And now that I'm in Hunter rank seven and the difficulty just keeps climbing, yeah, my solo hunts are 30 minutes long and they are intense and they are very difficult. It reminds me of some of my Iceborne uh, difficult hunts, but it's not unmanageable. It's very much doable. On the flip side, when I get uh, friends to join or viewers and friends to join and do multiplayer, I'm pretty relaxed in the sense that I, I don't feel as threatened or as challenged because when the four of us are wailing on this monster, it's a lot more doable and oftentimes we get in in 5-10 minutes. Now I understand I'm playing with veteran players who know the monsters, who know the game, and who are very comfortable and that might be what I'm seeing here. But the fact is that experience in multiplayer makes these monsters almost like pushovers and not real threats. The real threat is sometimes they wombo combo you and you faint, which we're seeing more of now. A lot of myself and uh, the viewers were getting knocked out in these fights, but it's not like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. It's more like, Whoa, what's happening? I'm dead. Y you don't even have time to process or to react to it. It's because you, got, you were at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's bullshit. Uh, the next thing is I feel that there's a lot of monsters that are locked. Like I said, there's I'm, I'm getting close to the final quest list of, of this game. And I still have 10 monsters that I don't know about. And viewers have told me that a lot of the monsters are either locked behind hunter ranks or behind uh, certain achievements like finishing all high rank and low rank quests. That's 
good, but I'm just wondering how many monsters are actually locked behind these things. Like, I understand they were locked in, in uh, Iceborne as well, and I actually like that. I like that there there is a goal of, hey, if you get to Hunter rank 50, you're going to unlock more challenge. If you get to Hunter rank 75, they even do that in Rise, and I love that system. I don't know if it's just because 3U hides it more or if I'm just unfamiliar with it, but it feels like there's a lot of stuff locked behind things that are just not obvious to understand, unless you're part of the community. Uh, and finally, this is kind of a small thing, but the honey grind is real. Like all of the grind in this game is just extra grindy. Um, so honey is one of the most valuable items, as we all know, and we achieve this by farming. Like we, we resolve the issue by farming. So in pretty much all the Monster Hunter games I've played, we're farming honey all the time because we're constantly using it to, to make our max potions, to make our, our mega potions, to make, there's something else we make with honey. And in this game, I'm like, I go through, usually I go through more than 10 honey per quest. And after every quest, even if I've maximized my farm, I think I get four to eight honey. The only reason I have not had a massive honey shortage and problem is because I've had a lot of friends and viewers who have been so helpful in giving me 10 honey every time they see me that I'm just swimming in j donated honey. It's fantastic. But if I was playing this solo or with a fresh community that they were worrying about their own honey imports and exports, like I don't think I'd be getting as many generous offerings of honey. Um, the new games fix this by, you know, world you have that whole steam machine where you, I think you get honey in there. You get a ton of items in there. And I feel in Rise, maybe it's because I'm not getting hit as much or dying as much, but I feel 